Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Backlog Banter. My name is Tucker Hazel. I'm joined today by my itsy bitsy teeny weeny co host, Abram Beater. And today we're here to talk about, boom, Pikmin 4, maybe one of the longest anticipated games that I can think of. We talked about how, oh, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, oh, that was in development for a while. That, had, that ain't got shit. Ain't got shit on Pikmin 4. And today we're here to talk about the game because not only is it out and not only have we played it but both of us have 100 percent of this game so i we haven't are yet to... but i'm close i mean you're so close that like by technicality you haven't 100 of it uh but anyway we're here to give a very very full thoughtful breakdown of this game our feelings on it our feelings about the status of the pikmin series maybe spin it off to some other topics and uh, incorporating some Submissions from our community yeah. of other members who have played some Pikmin. Not as many as I would have liked, but we'll do. We'll make do with what we got. You know, it's like the Great Depression. <laughs> Abram, Pikmin Four is out. Start talking to me, Tucker. I'm out of my Great Depression because Pikmin Four is released. Um, <laughs> and and I want to start this discussion with an anecdote. This is gonna as be far a- as I know, the Great Depression lasted until Pikmin 4 was released. <laughs> this, <laughs> is, so sad. <laughs> this is going to be a, an, an interesting anecdote, and it's going to take a okay. while, so you got to sit back, okay? okay? The year was 2015. <laughs> it was the summertime, Tucker. And I'm there with my family. We're on a boat. It's the family boat. We're taking the boat up the river. We take the boat up the river. We have a great day. We, have a, a we used to have a boat, yeah. That's strange. But okay, I'll let it slide. We used to have a boat. We took the boat up the river. This is actually the story of, of the last time we took the boat out. Sure. Because we take the boat up the river. We have a great time. We have maybe a little bit of lunch. We're coming back down the river, and the engine stops. Oh. And we can't get the engine started again. Sure. So now to get back home, we are just letting the boat float down the river. Okay. And this is 2015, right? So we've got cell service. Sure. We've got cell phones. We call some, some friends and family in the area saying, hey, we're on the boat. The boat's just floating down the river. We can't get the engine started. Can you come help us? The answer, Tucker, is that yes, they can. However, yeah. they can't right away. So we're floating the boat down the river in the summer of 2015. Yeah. The boat comes to a stop. But the boat's not stopping at the shoreline. It's just stopped, right? We have to <laughs> wait for assistance to get the boat Back to the shoreline. And here I am. Summer 2015. Eight years ago. Yeah. And I open I pull up my phone, Tucker, because I'm passing time now. I'm passing time. And I see a story from a Eurogamer. Wow. And you know what that story says, Tucker? Pikmin 4 is almost done with development. Pikmin 4 is close to completion. <laughs> and I remember, Tucker. Just like you were at that moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember sitting in the boat and thinking to myself, man... It sucks that the boat is stuck in the middle of the river. But you know what's great, Tucker? I'll be playing Pikmin 4 within a year or two. Pikmin 4 is close to completion. Yeah. <laughs> and Tucker, based on various factors, it seems like Miyamoto was actually telling the truth. And Pikmin sure. 4 ended up releasing in 2017 on the mm-hmm. Nintendo 3DS. Yes. The point being, it took eight years from when I was told... And the world was told that Pikmin yeah. 4, as we knew it, or wanted it, or wanted to know it, how about, yeah. was t- close to completion. It took about eight years for it to come. And Tucker? Unlike you. So did I. <laughs> I love Pikmin 4. I think that Pikmin 4 is one of the greatest games Nintendo has released in a while. I think that it is easily one of my favorite games of the Switch generation. I think it represents everything that I love about Nintendo. I also think that it is very flawed in a lot of ways. Mm. And I'm super excited to chat about all of this because it's a game that's very special to me. It's a game that I have not stopped thinking about since this no. release. And it's and it's a game that I really want to sink my teeth into, both sort of sharing the effusive praise that everybody's given it, but also I think mm. really kind of getting into the nuances of things I don't like about the game because I feel like not a lot of discussions I've listened to yet have have hit some of these points. Oh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm interested to do so not because I want to shit on the game or because I think the game is anything less yeah. than excellent, but because mm-hmm. it's a franchise I love so much. And I think that this is the best kind of flawed game. It's the kind of game sure. where flaws emerge from trying bold new things. And, yeah. when, you, and yeah. when you try things for the first time, they don't always work. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm super excited to talk about that because the fact that I even have the issues I have is an illustration of how far forward Nintendo progressed the series of Pikmin 4. Yeah, it is that step forward that makes this... I, I mean, I agree with you on all those points. Uh, one of my favorites of the Switch generation, one of their best games the last few years, I would personally contend one of the best... One of my, at least one of my favorite games that they've ever made. And that is not particularly surprising to me um, because I love Pikmin. I am a very passionate about a lot of the uh, design de- decisions and changes that have been made to a lot of their franchises this generation. And Pikmin 4 looked amazing leading up to launch. So I, I was like, yeah, this is probably one of the best games of the year. But I think that getting my hands on it and seeing the extent to which they took that step forward and how how big it, it, it's it's a step, but it's like it's a very big step. Like I don't yeah. even know how long of legs they got to make this big a step. Uh, that is what really blew me away and pushed this to being one of my favorites. Yeah, I I, I really am excited to attack this game from many uh, different directions, but I want to start at that high level. I think because I think there's a lot to talk about in terms of Pikmin 4 on a larger context level. And the and the length of that step, I think, is really interesting. Because this is a conversation we're having in our Discord, and we're going to be heavily integrating sort of community thoughts, as you were saying, into this. Um, one thing that I, I, that I touched on when we're talking with our friend Brendan in the server is this idea of Pikmin 4 as a leap forward. And the analog I drew was to Metroid Prime, to the chagrin of my co-host. I... I, I, I think what both games do and what to me is is sort of the, the, the thing that Pikmin 4 can most proudly hang its hat on is the ways in which it essentially does introduce a new axis to the gameplay. I really do think by putting the camera behind the captain and introducing Pikmin to verticality in its level design is as revolutionary for its formula as metroid prime was for metroids yeah not in the way that like mario 64 brought mario to 3d and then the game was radically different but in the way that metroid prime took metroid and complicated it with this new element that's what it is to me this is not a new game in many ways pikmin 4 is like a greatest hits of the series which i think is pretty cool but it's also an evolution of it it's the same gameplay but it's fresh and it just for me Mm. It's just about bringing the camera down. I have got so many more praises for the title than that, but mm-hmm. so much of my love for the game just comes from that right there. Yeah, well, why don't you focus in on that camera change first yeah. and foremost? Because what I think is interesting about that change and them prefacing the game's reveal with yeah. that, this is going to be one of the major changes here and also some of the earliest shots of gameplay that we saw being very low down behind the captain and we were thinking oh wow this is going to be more of an adventure game or it's going to be it's going to play radically differently yeah. and i'm interested in your thoughts because frankly i don't feel that the camera change sure did too much for to, to really impact my experience i think is a good change i think the fact that i can go up and down and then go very close to like get up close and personal to the environments is very cool but i also found myself staying at that high camera angle for sure. the majority of my playtime um and so it didn't uh radically change my my experience with pikmin 4 as opposed to the locked camera of the previous games yeah. so i mentioned in what ways that really changed your experience i mean i think a lot of it has to do with mood because as i was saying obviously mechanically the the game is quite different in some ways as we'll talk about but in other ways yeah. it really isn't um mm-hmm. I, I think what the camera does is it sort of addresses an issue that i've always had with the pikmin series and we've talked about before is mm-hmm. that like the environments are natural but ultimately in in, in the past games are very natural but it's at a certain point, set dressing, because yeah. basically what Nintendo is crafting is like a bunch of mazes that you have yeah. to navigate. It's simple geometry overlaid with leaves and hills and mushrooms, yeah. but not based around the naturalism of those objects. Yeah, and, and I and I think you can believe I think you believe it more in Pikmin 4 because you're down oh, under the leaves and everything. So yeah. I, I think that's the key difference I want to draw. But as I've sure. said in our re, like our retrospect about why we love Pikmin, for me so much of Pikmin is is this is the spirit and the feeling of it. And yeah. so the fact that the game connects me in, in what feels like a more intimate and specific way than the yeah. past games did to the environment, I think Absolutely. is really key. And it just 
And, and you're right. If even if it doesn't majorly affect gameplay, I think the fact that I can just pan the camera around, mm-hmm. I, I can be on in serene shores and bring the camera down to where the camera too is submerged in water. Suddenly, yeah, well, right. and, and the sound changes. The sound design and this game you're getting is, a different yeah. view of how vertical the levels are. No, that's definitely a good point. Yeah, and and I think that even if ultimately at the end of the day, it's not changing my mechanical relationship to the world it's definitely changing my personal relationship to the world and and i yeah. think that that for me is why pikmin 4 is so special because yeah. my favorite nintendo games let me really live in a space um mm-hmm. and i think that pikmin 4 lets me live in these spaces better than the other yeah. games ever did yeah absolutely and there's a lot of changes across different elements of the game that yeah. i think feed into that core of what makes Pikmin 4 so special especially in comparison to the three games that came before which i think you're right is the believability of this world and the fact that you are given the freedom to really drink it in and live in it yeah. for multiple reasons that we'll get into across the course of this. But I think that's a pretty good starting point or, or like a thesis to spin off into other things. Cause the more that I think about it from the mechanical changes to the structure changes to the, the basic gameplay changes and the camera changes a lot of the game's choices, especially where it makes itself different from what came before. Yeah is all feeding towards that is is being in this world and immersing yourself in it in a much greater degree than was ever possible before yeah absolutely and, and if i may tucker i want to i want to bring in all the right. community here at this point because J- our friend jace thomas asks a question that i think gets to the heart of this idea of change because we've both been saying that word a lot change 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 <laughs> and i think that what, what jace is asking here sort of explain some of it. And I also want to, again, as we're sort of getting a little bit more and more specific about Pikmin 4, I also want to talk about the ways Nintendo has talked about this game Mm pre-release. Jace asks, uh, my questions for both of you, does Pikmin 4 feel modern to you? And do you think Nintendo has done enough to attract younger audiences to the franchise who may not have played a Pikmin game before? Is Mm -hmm. the game accessible to those audiences? Mm -hmm. The only other thing I'll just say to contextualize that before I'm super curious to hear your answer um, okay. is that this is something that Nintendo was very, very openly talking about pre-release. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The the Acid Developer Pikmin interviews, which, by the way, just filled me with a level of jubilation every morning. Every mm-hmm. morning, I'd be doing my work. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be in the old salt mines, right? Mm-hmm. I'd put down the pickaxe for a minute. Um, and I'd go and so excitedly take 20 minutes to read those interviews because there's so much great stuff in there. It's, it's like being a child in like the 1920s in Ireland or whatever, and you yeah. suddenly get a chance to like spend five minutes in the flower field or whatever. Yeah, the, the, the children yearn for acid developer interviews. Yes, <laughs> and flowers, which Pikmin yeah. has a lot of. And, and what was so interesting to me about these interviews is that there was a real sense of candor from the development team, particularly Miyamoto, about the fact that he doesn't understand why Pikmin isn't more popular. Yeah. And as they're talking about, a lot of the changes made to Pikmin 4 are to make the game more, I don't know if palatable is the right word, Mm -hmm. but in some ways I think it is, more palatable to a mainstream audience. A little bit less intimidating from the outside looking in. And I think that that explains a lot of what I love and a lot of the problems I have with Pikmin 4. But I'm curious what you think of this to maybe more directly answer Jace's questions, which are three separate, but I think pretty clearly intertwined. What you make of this idea of Pikmin 4 as a modern, more accessible mainstream game? Well, what's interesting about Pikmin 4 feeling modern is that it is in comparison to the games that came before, because the Pikmin series kind of does its own thing. Yeah. Up to this point, that structurally, nothing really like it. Gameplay-wise, nothing really like it. It's just, you know, you're kind of just going through the world and chucking guys and getting some uh, treasure or ship parts. And, yep, that's what Pikmin is. And Pikmin 4, I think, in its length and its uh, unlockables and in its structure in terms of story pacing is much more akin to every other video game that's been made <laughs> yeah. in the last 15 years yeah, that yeah. Pikmin has just strayed away from. And I think in that, it feels modern by just being different and more similar to other things. Not that it is, you know, so far past what Nintendo usually does in terms of uh, a modern accessibility options and stuff. It, it's it's not. It is, yeah. it is just more modern and taking inspiration from other areas than Pikmin ever tried right. to because Pikmin 
never tried to. And that's what made those games so special. But I think that the combination of, uh, and I'll actually tr- kind of draw a comparison to Breath of the Wild here with Pikmin 4 is the idea of Nintendo putting their spin and the, the developers that they have that have been working on Japanese uh, de- developed games with their teams for years and years and years, putting their spin on tropes and concepts that other people have been doing uh, in other areas of the industry right. for a long time. Breath of the Wild was very special in that way because, yeah, it's an open world action RPG like many Western role playing games are, maybe too many of them, especially in that point in time. Yeah. But uh, Breath of the Wild, because it was made by Nintendo, brought some that special flavor to this. And Pikmin 4 is longer which a lot of games are longer nowadays and it does have more unlockables and currencies and side characters to talk to which pikmin has never had and frankly most nintendo games don't have but nintendo is able to bring their flavor to it and the concepts of pikmin which nothing else really plays with other than a few scant examples and incorporate design decisions and design ideas from the rest of the industry in such a natural way that for me pikmin 4 feels modern in that it is willing to take inspiration from other areas. Whereas Pikmin games have largely been walled off from other inspirations. That's That's been great, but Pikmin 4 is is great to me because it is that melding. And to me, it feels like an evolution because of that. And also because of that, it, I think it naturally is more accessible yeah. to the modern audience. I think that's actually maybe a different kind of tangent to go down, like how it appeals yeah. to a modern audiences. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it feels modern because it's, pulling inspiration from other places yeah i mean i think you're totally right something that's so interesting to me about pikmin 4 is the way that it really does to me feel western Mm. in the in the map in in the sort of adventure log you have in the upgrade trees and the side quests and everything you're right and i feel like it even more so than breath of the wild takes a lot of overt cues from other titles as I think you're lining up quite clearly. And to me, it speaks something that they also talked about in the Acid Developer interviews and that I sort of inarticulately talked about in a retrospective of the series, which is, I think that Pikmin has always been a universally, a franchise that was capable of being universally beloved. Sure. Because the characters are so cute and there's yeah. such an appeal, I think, to people in the natural setting, either because they live it or because they wish they did. Sure. Um I think that there's a heart and a charm to Pikmin that was just kind of buried under a gameplay format that I love and you love, but you couldn't look at it and understand it. I think you can basically look at every Nintendo series and in a couple moments of gameplay, get it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that was the case for Pikmin. Sure, or if yeah. in some ways, it, or if you could understand it, it introduced too many questions. This mm-hmm. this is a, a game that by borrowing from these tropes, and frankly, as you're saying, just by making it a longer title about exploration foremost, yeah. mm-hmm. it's it sort of fits into gaming verbs that people already understand. Mm-hmm. I think what this game does really nicely is it is it takes a game that people have played before and they take Pikmin, which people from the outside love, and mm-hmm. suck them together. Yeah. And the middle ground there, I think, is very special. And yeah. as as Brendan was saying, and I like this terminology, sort of invents like a third way to enjoy Pikmin. Mm. Because there's as a... To like the Pikmin... One, w- Pikmin two? Yeah, like the Pikmin 1, super hardcore, I don't know if it's the right word, but time pressure, intense, yeah. objective-focused Pikmin, mm-hmm. or the more explorative format of Pikmin 2, which sort of... Yeah it picks and chooses what it wants from those and is Pikmin 4. I think that is great. But I think you're right that we can also talk about these changes for the sake of accessibility in Mm -hmm. a more particular way, because I do think that they are pervasive across the entire game. Mm -hmm. Um, And the control is one that I'm really, really interested to talk about. Sure. Because it's something I've I've heard a lot of different opinions on. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I'm kind of somewhere in the middle on the game's control. So I'm curious what you think about that first. Uh, well, to, for context, the game's yeah. controls have been changed from previous titles primarily because there is not motion controls in the same way that the series has been known for for almost a decade at this point yeah. with the new play controls and pointing and aiming being the primary way that you're interacting with the world. And even with Pikmin 1 and 2 on GameCube, it was pointing the stick in the exact direction that you wanted to, and that was where your cursor went. Now, yeah. with Pikmin 4... Uh, I believe this was at least somewhat introduced in Pikmin 3 or Pikmin 3 Deluxe. There's a there's a lock on, yeah. Essentially only lock on in this game is if you are near a 
Candy Pop Bud or an enemy with a weak spot, your little cursor is going to lock onto there, and then that is basically the only place you can throw it. And yeah. for, I am I'm kind of in the middle in that I'm not entirely on one side, but I do lean more towards it worked for this game. Yeah. This game was clearly designed for that control scheme and the enemies don't have as specific of areas that you need to hit them in and i didn't have problems with it for 90 yeah. percent of my runtime and it felt very natural and i got super into the groove and i think that it mixes very well with the more complex control scheme overall incorporating ochi incorporating platforming elements incorporating you managing a bag with different items it yeah. has a lot more going on so locking locking on kind of allows you to free up a tiny bit of mental space to focus on uh, there's like 10 other things going on in right. like your, when you're controlling the game and interacting with the world that the other games didn't have but it also does it's a it is a flawed system it, it yeah if there's more than one guy on the screen good fucking luck uh, you, I, I guess you're gonna defeat him or you're gonna like run away and then you're gonna turn back around and it'll lock onto the next one but it sometimes is janky and sometimes locks onto a thing that i don't want it to lock onto um but that was those were, as I was alluding to, certainly the minority of moments. And it was just kind of like an occasional, oh, that's right, this lock-on thing can be annoying. As opposed to, I'm not enjoying controlling this game because, especially after playing a couple hours of the game, it really felt like second nature to me. Yeah, I mean, I think that it, I think that it works pretty well. I think there's a couple obvious oversights. For me, the most obvious oversight is a toggle for the lock-on. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't see the design reason why that that's not there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I think that that is a, a mistake in that I find myself in tense situations wishing that I had a little bit more control. A yeah, great definitely. example is I was doing a night mission recently where I was being swarmed by enemies and I needed to, I needed to kind of recall my Pikmin and, and realign and, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to throw out a bunch of different targets and I couldn't the way I wanted to. Yeah. yeah now, now, now you're totally right that, that, that is not the, that it's not indicative of the experience on the whole or even in in part it's it's the minority cases where that happens but yeah. my feeling is it would be so simple to give us the the, the toggle that would make it that that's never a problem yeah i totally get and given the the toggle or 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 presenting lock on as the way to play for a more cas or or say how about a more mainstream audience mm-hmm. um because i've never found really the strategy of pikmin to be in the throwing itself, no, no, yeah, yeah, it, it's all. It's always an element that's had to have a very high skill ceiling. Um, I don't necessarily think though that that's at the heart of Pikmin. So I don't care personally that it's dumbed down that you lock right onto the enemy's weak spot or whatever. Mm-hmm. What I care yeah. more about is the fact that I feel like I have to fight against the controls sometimes. Sure, because yeah, I'm yeah. more than happy to locking on. I think it's great. But what Pikmin three did wasn't broken so i'm not sure why they fixed it which is yeah free cursor and then you could lock on when you wanted to and then take the lock on off when you didn't want to if you want to flip that so lock on's on by default and you take it off that's fine too i just don't see why that mm-hmm. was the case there's a couple other things it's the game- a little bit more stubborn of a cursor than you want to you're like okay yeah. i want to move off of you and then it's like it's like gripping on it's like holding on and you're like get the fuck off of there and you have to like yank it <laughs> that that also speaks to my biggest issue with the controls and this is mm. another thing that was done for a, a more mainstream audience to i think to sort of not have players impede their own dandori and we'll use that word a lot this discussion yeah. which is now these motherfuckers these little pikmin when you, they set their mind on a task you have to whistle until their eardrums pop to get them to stop. It's true. It's true. For me, this is a massive, massive impediment to my gameplay, even though for for other people, it's probably the the opposite. Mm -hmm. My problem is if I can't whistle Pikmin off of an object very efficiently, I'm slowing down my kind of moment-to-moment decision-making. Because what I'll do sometimes is I'll have a, a, a creature carcass be carried by one group of Pikmin because I have more of them or they're just yeah. more readily available to do a task but I actually need the Pikmin sprouts for another color so yeah. I, I yeah. want to whistle them off and I want to throw the right color on and have them finish the task or I mm-hmm. want to stop a group of Pikmin who are fighting an enemy and put somebody else on there's all kinds of number of circumstances right. but I have to sort of stop and hold down that whistle for what feels like maybe a one two count mm-hmm. And, it is. Yeah, it's like two seconds. Yeah, and I just, for me, that doesn't work. And I think the overarching point is that the controls are more than functional. 
but mm-hmm. I just don't. I think that they were catering so much to a wider audience that they kind of missed what I think would have been easy ways to also give more experienced players sort yeah. of the room to do what we need to do. Mm. No, definitely. I, I think that that both of these changes that are explicit changes that they consciously made to yeah. mostly decrease error. Uh, right. And part of the skill, but also the frustration of and, and partially inaccessibility of previous Pikmin games is that it is easy to accidentally send a bunch of Pikmin or pull a bunch of Pikmin off or do those sort of things that that if you're if you don't know what you're doing can frustrate you. But then if you do know what you're doing, it's a boon. And yeah. that is what you're talking about with that skill ceiling. And you're right that they made these changes uh, for accessibility. And I land on the side of. I agree with you. There yeah. should be options for this. It would, it would certainly not be a worse game if there are right. options to to have the whistle work a little bit faster, to have lock on be the secondary option. Um, but I don't factor that lack of option into my score or my experience because yeah. I didn't have those problems with controlling the game. It worked the way I wanted to. I more often than not just found that having them grip onto little clay balls or whatever the hell that they're doing a little bit longer allowed me to focus on the Pikmin that were free, which I, yeah. I think is, is maybe the intended choice is that your, your whistle is pretty big in this game, especially once you get it upgraded. Yeah. So if you've got a, a stream of guys going to build a bridge and they're going through your whistle, you don't want them to stop, but your whistle's right. probably going to go over them. If you're trying to whistle back in a group of guys that are attacking a ball or whatever that I think that change allowed me to feel like the Pikmin were actually working more alongside me rather than for me. The Pikmin had, as you were saying, they, they got they get their mind set on something and they're they gonna are on it. Do it. <laughs> and and that means they're determined little guys. And it, yeah. I, it does, I think, help the feel that they are at least somewhat autonomous um, rather than being entirely under my right. control. But um, I do recognize the strategic appeal or skill-based appeal of wanting it to be a little more flexible. Yeah, I mean that and that's really what I'm I'm after. It's just options. And it's a sort of yeah. things that I think can be tweaked in patches or whatever. I, yeah. I just, Oh, definitely. Because I I'm I'm with you. I, I think about and this is something that I'm going to bring up later on or probably bring up several times. I have tried to show Pikmin to other people. I've tried to show Pikmin to my mm-hmm. sister. I've tried to show Pikmin to Jean. I've tried to play multiplayer with them and they just don't get it. And that's not yeah. their fault. Pikmin does it does ask more of you than the average Nintendo game. True, absolutely. And I think changing that is for the better. I just mm-hmm. think that there would there were easy ways to also not feel like you're kind of pushing the skill ceiling down with me while you sure. raise the floor. And, mm-hmm. and, and I think they it's kind of it. yeah, it's like the I know the crash trash compactor. Ex- Tucker, Tug couldn't set it better. So, so so yeah, I've got a couple other problems that kind of go to that extent. But I kind of want to yeah. I kind of want to zoom out and I kind of want to read a community quest a kind of community submission. Oh, if, oh, oh, yeah. Just bring somebody in and see where they want to take us here. I want to read a comment here um, from Phil. Because I think I think what what Phil is hitting on here a little bit uh, is, is interesting. Sort of the the as I'm saying this this the sense of Pikmin 4 from the perspective of, of a returning fan. Phil says, as I cruise to the end of the first act, for context, Phil is basically talking about everything that happens before the first set of credits as act one. Yeah, Pikmin 4 part one and Pikmin 4 part two. Yes. Which we actually, we, we definitely need to talk about in greater detail, and this might be the place to do it. <laughs> yeah. But as Phil says, as I cruise to the end of the first act, I felt Pikmin 4 was a great Switch experience, but only a solidly good Pikmin experience since I missed some of the brutal challenge and unguided exploration of the first two games. But Act 2 really brought it all together for me. Those last two levels were my favorite in the game, with caves that presented real difficulty. The additional post-game content, I'm assuming he's talking about all of our shipwreck tale, and this is a full spoilers discussion, um, uh, really makes it a must-own for fans of the first two games. Um... Yeah, where do you want where do you want to take that? Because I've got a number of things to say about what, what Phil's talking about. Um, I agree. Yeah. Uh, though I think I come down a little more positively on that Act One uh, yeah. side of the game. I I already did feel like it was my favorite Pikmin game, and yeah. I didn't even realize there was going to be 
uh, the shift towards actually completing the game uh, after the end of that uh, first sure. credits. Um, so I was wrapping it up, and I I'd heard that there was some stuff post game, but I didn't realize the extent. And I was like, right, oh, yeah, this is my favorite Pikmin game. I played it for uh, twenty hours, which is about the length of all three of the other games combined. Yeah, uh, and I had a great experience, and it flowed really well, and I got super addicted to it, and I loved all these new ideas, and that's awesome. Like, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, I never got the rock Pikmin on you. I, right. I I never saw Louis. I I know some of these things are in the game. Like, what the hell's going to happen here? And it's like, oh, this, that that final area where you like get, oh, you open the safe. It's like, oh, that was you know, it's not like a great ending. Yeah. But I'm like, ah, you know, these are these are small potatoes. It's like it's some question marks, whatever. I'm sure there'll be some challenges. Uh, but I was thoroughly thoroughly satisfied. Yeah. And had very few issues with that act one. But I think that what makes this game so special is that it does divide it it bisects itself in an maybe kind of awkward way but yeah. ultimately if you are a pikmin fan and you are willing to put in the 30 35 hours it takes to see this game to its actual end and beat the actual final boss right you're gonna have a really great first chunk of the game and then it's going to surprise you and i think increase its um value as an interesting piece of game design and experience by providing you with a lot of new stuff after the credits roll and that balance and the element of surprise, which Pikmin has never really had before. It's never had that element of surprise to it may push this game even further up in my mind of like, wow, there's even more here than I thought there was. And not only only there more, there's, there's a lot more. Like that's a substantial chunk of the game that that they put after the credits roll. Yeah. I I think the first thing I'll say is I don't think that the credits come at the right time. Sure. I agree. I, it's, not, I, it's not good that they come that way. <laughs> no, I don't think it's satisfying. I, I think yeah. back to Pikmin 2, because Pikmin 2 ends in a similar way. As soon mm-hmm. as you hit 10,000 Pocos earned, the game ends. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, for Pikmin 2, Louis gets left behind. You can go back to the planet more. There's more animal areas to, to go through and more treasure to find, obviously. Um, but it feels like in Pikmin 2, there's kind of a sense of... of, of conclusion to that to that credit beat mm-hmm. hitting oh, though it drops very suddenly which i don't is know why i never went past that, cr- yeah. that credit yeah i love pick I, I and i just i don't think that that level of like finality is present here at all no I actually, especially because it also it does the opposite it's like okay yeah. we did it and then it gives you like three different story hooks like one minute later that are like actually fuck you there's more yeah, and I actually don't even think that the ending after Ochi is that satisfying either. Sure. Uh, because for me, I kind of viewed that as the end of the story. So I went and I did that before I did All More Shipwreck Tale and before I started 100% of the areas. So like, I had a lot of castaways left behind. And I yeah. was curious kind of how the game was going to re- reconcile with that. Of mm-hmm. Because the, it, the first ending is, oh, we rescued All More, let's leave. Oh, we can't because of Ochi. My feeling was, okay... Well, I'm going to go s- fix Ochi's problem, but I've got all these other castaways. So what's going to happen? The solution is, ah, oh, we're going to leave. So you have your cutscene, and uh, then we're going to come back. And then you can kind of leave again whenever you want. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I had all the castaways at that point. So right. I didn't get that second fake ending. Yeah, they bas- it basically is like, oh, okay, now we're leaving. And then it says the end. And then they basically go back to the planet because they feel bad they left people behind. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think that that's like elegant in a certain way i was a little bit worried frankly that they're going to do the breath of the wild to the kingdom thing of loading you back in before your last save mm-hmm. uh, which i wouldn't have been happy about so i'm happy i'm glad that they do it this way but i just don't think that the plot of this game is particularly strong and i don't think that mm-hmm. when especially the first ending hits you really feel a whole hell of a lot because of it sure yeah no i definitely agree and i think it's just it's just a, it's just a weird decision but yeah Ultimately, though it is something I can criticize, I was so engrossed by that second chunk of the right. game that I was like, oh, that it, it's it's kind of thing. It's like, that was weird, but ultimately it doesn't matter. Like, I was going to watch the yeah. credits at some point anyway. Might as well get them over with early. <laughs> yeah, and I will say that the second, the, the, the fifth and sixth areas and then the Sage Leaf trials and everything, yeah. I am not sympathetic to the argument that this game is too easy. Mm-hmm. For a number of reasons. I don't think it's too easy. Now, yeah. I do think, again, there should have been another difficulty option. Sure. That was as simple as modifiers. Enemies take more damage or deal more damage. They take more damage to take down. Mm-hmm. It's ultra spicy mode from Pikmin 3 Deluxe. It could have yeah. been implemented here um, 
as well. It's not, and I don't know why it isn't. Oh, but just for picking portal locks. That's a great point. I think that the second the, the second set of, of of areas are maybe not super hard because I mm-hmm. think you have to get into that final twenty floor cave for anything on the critical path. I think to be that hard. Mm-hmm. It's never mindless. And to me, that's the difference. No, not. I, I think I think that you can have challenge the way Pikmin 2 has challenge of some guys is going to fuck up your squad. You're just going to walk into a cave. You're going to be unprepared. You're going to get fucked up and you're going to have to rebuild your Pikmin squad. Yeah. Pikmin 4 doesn't do that because it is an easier game, no doubt. Partially yeah. because of the control changes we talked about, partially because... The game is just not as hard. Enemies mm-hmm. take longer to eat your Pikmin and various things. Yeah. But you always and you have to rewind as an option. And you've rewind. But I think you still always have to think quite critically. And and I and yeah. I think that's great. And to me, difficulty is the wrong it's it's the wrong metric. The difficulty should be how thoughtful you have to be playing Pikmin. Because to me, Pikmin's all about thought and Dandori and improving oh, your absolutely. Dandori. And just because I run into a boss that's super difficult doesn't mean that my Dandori is getting better. It just means I found a hard mm-hmm. boss that I have to go re- re- rebuild my squad to take on. Mm-hmm. So I'm really pleased with the difficulty curve. And I think that the reason the credits hit there is because Area 5, 6, that final cave with the final boss against the giant dog do yeah. ask more of you than the first four absolutely. areas. Yeah, I think that the thoughtfulness of this game is what really engaged me with it. I have loved Pikmin games in the past because of their aesthetic, because of the uniqueness of their concept, but never really for their structure. I think that the structures are are fun, they're good, they're fine. Um, but for me, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I ever felt like it was missing something yeah. because I had nothing to compare it to. But I think the amount that they added in terms of... Uh, structure here engages me with this game on a much deeper level and yeah. makes it more internally thoughtful. I don't have the external pressure of your juice is going to run out or yeah. Louis is going to die or you're going to die. Uh, but I have the internal drive that I want to 100% everything. I want yeah. to see what's on the other side of this. I want to beat that enemy. I want to uh, get the next onion. I want to get the next floor. Like I want to uh, get enough, um, raw material so I can upgrade the next thing. There's a lot of ways that this game provides, I think, more subtle external motivation yeah. that increase my internal motivation to get better at the game and uh, and explore the areas more. That makes it a more thoughtful experience. I feel like I understand these areas better because I was given the flexibility to mess around with them in them longer, yeah. to really thoroughly explore them, go for that 100%. Um, and I was incentivized to do that because the game rewards you constantly for going that extra step, going the extra mile, 100%ing things. Yeah. And that com- combination of taking away the larger structural pressure that the other games have had in varying degrees and instead increasing the internal pressure because of the flexibility really, really worked for this to be the most engaged I've ever been in a Pikmin game and the most thoughtful I've ever been with its gameplay. Yeah, I mean, I do think it goes back to the camera. I think it goes back to a lot of the things we're talking about in that when I play uh, Pikmin 4, you know what? I'm actually going to pause here. I'm going to pause. You're doing cat. I'm doing cat. We're both doing cat. I'm letting my cat out. I was talking. I was talking, and I'm like, you know what? Paul's got to leave the room, too. We'll do a double cat, a double cat release mid-video. We're all friends here. We've got cats. Peek behind the curtain. You're screaming from the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. See, see, that's the difference. That's, that's why Petra is, is, is sort of, I would say, unrefined compared to the sophisticated cat I have, Paul. Oh, definitely. Because definitely. here's what Paul does. He was sitting there. He's like, I'm feeling restless. He goes, and he sits patiently by the door quietly until yeah. I go and open the door for him. That's gentlemen. Yeah, he's a gentleman. Um, but no, what, what what I was saying is I think that it does go back to the camera and it goes back to me just wanting to understand the world and pay a little bit closer attention to it. I think yeah. what it does is, is it trades traditional difficulty as a mode for thoughtful engagement for just your 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 want to get a little bit closer to the environments. Absolutely. And, yeah. that, and that's why I never felt disengaged by the first four areas. Serene uh, Shores in particular is one of my favorite game areas I've gotten to experience in a while. Absolutely. Cause it, cause it oh is, God, it's, nice. it, it, it's so beautiful. And they all these areas are packed with so much because yeah. just take serene shores. For instance, they said, let's do a beach area. 
Yeah. But what if the beach area had a big sand cast in the middle of it? But mm-hmm. what if the beach area also had a little coral reef over there? But yeah. what if the tide changes with the time? Mm-hmm. It, it feels it feels like they took a a motif, the yeah. beach, and built upon it with so many things that I they're just begging for me to go and and mess around with. Yeah. And, and I think that sense is what makes the game always feel so thoughtful because. Yeah. I, it, it kind of does the thing that Chibi Robo does or or Captain Rainbow does or other games of this size is it gives you areas that aren't huge, even though these areas are comparatively massive when you look yeah. at other Pikmin yeah. games. In the scope of games that exist, these are not huge areas, but they're packed with so many landmarks and so many interesting features that you come to really get to know them. Um, and I loved get, coming to get to know the area. So even if I wasn't being like, damn, that enemy is kicking my ass. I was thinking, damn, I really love where I am right now. And I really just love yeah. being here. And I love yeah. going around. And, and, and I think that that is much harder to evoke. It's much harder to mm. get me excited. Or, or I think I'm not, I'm gonna make, I'll universalize this. I think it's much harder to sell somebody on vibes than it is to just say, hey, here's a hard thing to go overcome. Mm, yeah, but Pikmin cultivates such incredible atmosphere that that really is is what I think about when I think about the game. Yeah, th- this game takes the atmosphere that the other games have conceptually established and definitely had, especially for their time. I mean, realism of graphics is one of Pikmin's greatest strengths. You look at what Pikmin one and two basically looks the same, but Pikmin one and two did for that that hardware with water physics and having a bunch of little guys running around and the dappling of light. And then Pikmin 3 takes to actual HD and much richer textures on things and much more realistic lighting. And that those are both some of the best looking Nintendo games, especially other times with Pikmin yeah. 4 in its atmosphere of uh, of having looking better technically than all the games that came before. And probably I, th- I would say being one of Nintendo's best looking games, period. Yeah. Um, in terms of texture and lighting engine, all of that. Um but also just being able to cultivate a more atmospheric locale because it does feel more naturalistic. And I'm going to talk about the changes in level design here that come from multiple uh, game design elements that were distinctly changed from previous games. And number one is the size of these areas. Yeah. There are six areas here, which is about the same as, as previous Pikmin games, but they are so much larger that they allow for a variety that feels realistic. Yeah. When you're in that pr- first area and there's a little lake and there's a bench and there's an area with bot with pots and there's an area that's a little hill and an area that's a flower field. These are areas that feel, or these are elements that feel like they could be next to one another. Yeah. And Pikmin f- in the past, uh, especially in one and two, three, I think is, is more naturalistic than those first it two, but is. Pikmin for one and two was, as you were saying, naturalistic textures and there are leaves that look good, but it's like little islands and tiny hills, and it's not its not a place. It is conceptually a place, and it te- the textures look like a place, but what? nothing can happen. Like Things don't live here. Like There's no there's no impact on the environment here. And Pikmin 3 was certainly better at that with locations that were a tundra, and okay, so there's going to be snowy hills that snowballs are going to roll down, or a river with things floating down it. Okay, that's a place. Pikmin 4, in all the areas that it goes to, has things that make sense to be next to one another and at a scale that makes a good amount of sense and so much more variety in its locales and then even within its locales smaller areas in the larger areas and then even in those the fact that they're introducing uh human elements man-made elements makes you as a human being because we're all that connect to this world on a deeper level it's like no that's a bench that's a that's a sand bucket i i know these things and I think that it does cultivate a much stronger atmosphere because it leans into the naturalism and lets the naturalism overtake level design. Yeah. But to the point where it feels like better level design. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, I, I think about Pikmin 1 just because I played Pikmin 1 HD right before Pikmin 4. I think of Distant Spring, which is an area that I enjoy, but like you go and there's like geoglyphs on the ground and there's like, like hard 90 degree angled maze structures out in the water and on on one hand i think it does sell this idea that pnf 404 is like this weird it's like facsimile of earth in some ways but it also doesn't quite feel like it has a natural context 
Pikmin 4 is all about that. And then what it does is when it says, hey, I do want a cave, I do want a maze like structure here. I want something. Let's have that be man made. And this is a point that Josh Thomas raised in his review that I thought was really great, which is just like the synthesis between the man made structures and the, and like the just natural landscapes is really great because yeah. it all feels like it harmonizes together really nicely. Oh, in, a, in a way that I, mean, I didn't even notice that I was climbing up a sandcastle yeah. until I saw like the little peaks on top. I'm like, Oh, the beach just yeah. flowed into a sandcastle, which overlooks the little pools that are that are gathered at the bottom, and it just makes so much sense. I, I you're right. I love the synthesis there. Yeah, I I, I think that's fantastic. I, I do want to use this as an opportunity to share my biggest issue with Pikmin Four. Okay, and it is an issue that you and Bo and in the infamous Botox media mm-hmm. uh, so it talked about in passing in in your discussion okay. on the on okay. the wonderful ns podcast oh yeah and i want to be here and be the mouthpiece for the fact that creatures not respawning is a major issue picking for Mm -hmm. um (laughs) for a number of reasons Mm. but this is my biggest issue with the game because i think it i think it's the one thing that for me it's kind of has a toppling effect onto lore and level design and mechanics and feel and everything Mm -hmm. for people who might be coming to pikmin 4 for the first time when you kill enemies in the overworld here they are gone for good in the old pikmin games you killed enemies they came back after a couple days and that was kind of part of why the day system the day system mattered in a game like pikmin 2 Mm -hmm. because like enemies would come back and and that had that had significance it not being here does a number of things. So you're going to have to give me a second. So I'm going to lay out the whole field for you. On, on a world building level, I don't like it because it makes me feel like I'm destabilizing entire ecosystems. Sure. <laughs> and I don't you like... Are, and you always have. And you always have been. And, and Pikmin has always had a complicated relationship to the natural world, I think. Mm. However, I don't think that it's ever sort of... Uh, as I feel like Pikmin 4 kind of accidentally does, uncritically puts you in a position where you're just wiping out massive amounts of species. Sure, yeah. Um, and I don't like that because I, I feel like it, it distances me from this world a little bit. Because mm-hmm. I do return to these areas n- not as as a person who's coming back after I've 100% of the area to casually walk around in, but even as somebody who's just looking for treasure still, Walking yeah. around and finding nothing, the environment feels very, very isolating. When mm-hmm. when you enter there for the first time, it feels so rich and teeming with life. Yeah, I think the lack of the creatures does for me bring the areas, once they're gone, a little bit back in terms of the direction of one and two of feeling a little bit more like set dressing in post-natural sure. spaces. Because the, the flora might be there, but the fauna has just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't really like that. Now, I understand why they did it. Because this is, again, also, I think, pretty clearly for the benefit of new players, because they don't then have to worry about having to re-defeat an enemy that gave them trouble. You defeat the enemy, now you've you've claimed the land, you can get the treasure, and you're good. You don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's not something that they had to worry about necessarily, not only because it's easier to fight the enemies, but because the Blood Moon exists in, in, in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Those are major games for played by yeah. many, many different types of people. And well, frankly, I can't think of many games that do this sort of thing where enemies stay dead forever. Because frankly, yeah. most games don't have enemies placed in specific locations as ostensibly puzzle op- obstacle, yeah. which is what Pikmin enemies boil down to. This enemy is placed here next to these items and next to other kinds of enemies because it's going to force you to approach a combat scenario in a different way and, and yeah. pay attention to the environment in different ways. Um, but most enemies just have, or most games just have enemies spawn and despawn and walk around and yeah. they've got the prices. And, and, and that's, but Pikmin, uh, Pikmin, Pikmin 4 is actually one of the only examples I can really think of of enemies just staying gone. Yeah, and, and, and I think that there could have been, a, again, uh, there could have been a middle ground. You could have not had the major enemies respawn sure. if, if you want to do that, but then leave the bulb orbs and the baby snagrets and various things. Yeah. yeah. Even if you wanted to replace the enemies you kill initially with 
weaker enemies or something. You、mm-hmm. could even then have an interesting line of like flavor text about, oh, you defeated all the major predators in the area. Now all these other creatures are able to come、sure. and inhabit、oh, the, the space. So I think it's a missed opportunity from the pre- from the perspective of atmosphere, which is the thing that I might love、sure. most about Pikmin Four. But I think it also has a major knock-on effect on gameplay, and I'm not just talking about the replay value of revisiting an area because I, that's not how I engage with Pikmin, and that's the point you and Bo were making that this is not really how you play.、Um, the problem for me, though, is I'm in a post-game situation where I'm trying 100% areas and I'm trying to gear up for those last couple really difficult things I have to do,、mm-hmm. and I'm finding myself with very few. Rock Pikmin. I'm finding myself with very few Ice Pikmin. I'm finding myself、mm. with very few Red Pikmin, because frankly, I got a lot of them、um, killed as I sort of brute forced my way through the 20 floor cave. Sure. Yeah. But the 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 larger issue is that there is no great way to build those stores back up.、Mm-hmm. And when I get the white onion and the purple onion from the Leaf Sage Trials. I'm gonna have no great way of building those pigment stores back up. What I'm gonna have、yeah. to do is I'm gonna have to get、um, pellet posies, because、mm-hmm. pellet posies do respawn, of course. Yeah, but that's the well, only. No, because also enemies respawn every time when you go into a cave. So you can just go into any cave and just kill a bunch of enemies. Although、but、those don't give you those don't give you don't any give pigment. You... They, oh, they no, give you sparkle. Yeah, yeah they, they give you sparkle. There, there, there is there is、hmm. no engine for. Building your Pikmin stores true. beyond true. just pellet farming posies. pellet posies, yeah, yeah, and I, and I think that that's a, a a major issue and something I'm running into more and more at this stage of the gameplay.、Mm. Um, because yeah, never yeah, thought about that.、Way. I mean, of course, I, I can think- go. Sorry, I mean I can go down into the caves when I need to get those purple Pikmin, and those white Pikmin. Yeah, I can go、yeah. in and I can pluck them. They are in a bunch of caves, but also when I get the onions, the kind of the The purpose of having the onion is that I don't have to do that. The purpose of the yeah, onion of course, is I can build up those those、yeah. s- the stocks, but I can't. Or I can、yeah. if I very slowly and tediously comb the maps for pellet posies and kind of、yeah. do that cyclically. I just I think that it is a major major oversight that has gameplay and atmospheric ramifications that to me again feels like it doesn't really have a, a defined justification if it is for the sake of like. Ease of player, like I said, I think you can come up with a really kind of cute solution and introduce a new set of enemies or, or do something.、Yeah. I just,、no. I don't, I don't get it. I think it's a major issue, though. I think it's, it, I think it is undoubtedly my biggest issue with Pikmin Four. No, it, it is very interesting, and I think you've presented multiple reasons other than I can't go back to the areas and fuck around, which is how my mind instantly went because、yeah. I heard Josh Thomas say that, and I think I heard someone else mention that, and, and as I mentioned with Bo, I was like,、eh, that's just not. I played the game, so it was never going to be an issue、yeah. to me. I think you've presented ways for me to better agree with that side that it is an issue. However, I don't know how this ended up happening, but I I didn't have that issue with、yeah. running out of Pikmin types. I mean, I've never had that issue in Pikmin period. I think maybe because I'm pretty good at at managing having my guys go back and、uh, and collecting pellet posies pretty regularly every morning. But I've got. 250 of, of every kind of pig that I've got an onion for,、yeah. so I was never going to notice that I needed them, and I couldn't get enemies to respond them in that way.、Um, and what's interesting is I, I had so many for so much of the game, and this, this is just a point of how, how not of a problem that was for me, or how、yeah. not it could have ever been a problem for me. I started using ice pigmen on enemies and destroying their corpses and not bringing them back. Because I would rather have the Pikmin that I had have flowers, and so I wanted the nectar that they dropped from being frozen. And I was actively、yeah. making that choice of I want to have a bunch of ice Pikmin on my team because I don't need more Pikmin, and I don't care that there's not things for me to get more Pikmin because I've got 250 of them,、uh, and I just want the ones I have to be stronger. Yeah, I mean that's interesting because I made that choice also, but I think a little bit more sub. Consciously, of in the interest of making sure I'm not losing Pikmin this encounter, in the、mm. interest of just using this fun new Pikmin type I haven't seen before, I am freezing、yeah. a lot of enemies.、Mm. I don't think I realized the ways in which I was like overfishing、uh, the the,、yeah. the creatures.、Um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> how <it> happened. <laughs> and the other thing is, like, I don't when I play the older Pikmin games, I really don't collect the pellet posies unless I really need them because for the most、sure. part, I am. 
because I'm revisiting these areas over and over again, I'm just defeating enemies again and again and again. Yeah, and again. yeah of course. And I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking about how that impacted my gameplay loop. And it wasn't until I got the rock onion and I had 10 yeah. rock Pikmin. Yeah. And, I, and I had to think to myself, okay, well, where am I going to get the rest? Yeah, yeah, that, of course. That, that, that the gameplay dimension of this issue kicked in. Mm. So it's just, it's another thing like the lack of a toggle that I simply don't, see the justification for i i feel like it's a, i feel like it's a neat i feel like it's a it's like an unnecessarily extreme solution to i to sure. what i think the design problem was so yeah no yeah and it's not something i could point to yeah. this is why they made the decision either um i don't know if we'll ever find out why they made that decision because it was obviously a very conscious choice something yeah. explicitly different from what came before um but i think you've i think you presented your case and i agree to agree with it to the extent that i'm able to sure I'm an ally. <laughs> you want to? Re- can we read another community post? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Love the community. Ride, ride for them. Who do you want to uh, read? I can. I'll take. I can take or leave. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you want to read? Uh, I'm gonna go to Murph. Actually, uh, Murph, co-host of the Day Dreamcast, of course, alongside one Mr. Brogan Chatton, sure. who says Pikmin Four is the sequel to Pikmin Two in the way P- Pikmin Three is the sequel to Pikmin One. You get get one of those. A blank is to blank as blank is to blank. Yeah, I gotta, what are I those gotta, called on that? That's some, some English class shit. Let's pause for a second. Hold on. Pikmin okay. 4 is the sequel to Pikmin 2 in the way that Pikmin 3 is sequel to Pikmin Okay, I've got it. Okay. I've got yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's not particularly common. No. I it sounds, I, I, you I just Pikmin a lot. I had to see it. Sometimes I just need to yeah. see these things. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. In a lot of ways, it's pleasing, especially how it keeps up, keeps surprising you with the more you do. But it still has that, quote unquote, Elden Ring. Arkham Knight, Smash Ultimate, end quote, feeling where even though it is the culmination of what came before, something indescribable is keeping me from naming it the best of the series. Nothing has happened that makes me name it better than two, but I couldn't say why, because on paper it absolutely should. And then I believe I deleted an extra thing or I didn't copy it. I think it was a separate message where he said, I might, I might just be nostalgia. I don't know. Something along those lines. I, I, um, I think that there's a typo here, but I get what he's saying. It should probably say nothing has happened um, that makes me think it isn't. It basically what he's saying is nothing yeah, has happened yeah. that makes us think it isn't better than two. Um, but or, it, I'm lost paper in the sauce, but we, we get the point. We get the yeah. point. We get the point. Yeah. What, what do you make of this? Because I have um, thought about this. Well, I, you just share it because I don't have too much to say about this. I, f- I don't think I'm ready to call this the best Pikmin game yet. Okay. I want to go replay Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Mm, sure. Um, especially because there's there are a lot of things that I didn't do in Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Like There's a whole Olimar side adventure yeah. in, in Pikmin 3 Deluxe mm-hmm. that I never played. Um, so I want to spend more time with that because I, I do... And it goes back to actually what I was saying at the very beginning of the video. That Pikmin 4 to me only has the flaws it has because it tries so many radically new things. Yeah. I think an interesting counterpoint is like Metroid Dread. To me, Metroid Dread is m- my favorite 2D Metroid game, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Mm-hmm. But also it's because it doesn't really do much that wasn't done before. So all its yeah. job really is, is polishing and punching up existing yeah. concepts. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I think Pikmin 4 reminds me a lot of Super Mario Odyssey and that it takes a lot of swings that connect in the broad strokes but mm-hmm. on a more individual level, I'm not sure if the sum of the parts for me is as strong as somebody who is already in the Pikmin trenches to say it's my favorite. Sure. But it's yeah. it's riding that f- first second place slot right now. It c- very mm-hmm. well could be my favorite once I've yeah. once I've replayed Pikmin three. Um, but it's close. I just I don't know. I think that the, I think that the polish of Pikmin three, yeah. both polish on like just like a visual aesthetic level, but also polishing the gameplay ideas of the game titles before sure. it to me might still be stronger for my tastes but the fact that four yeah. is in that conversation for me is yeah very exciting no of course i mean it is actually something that's very interesting and it mirrors almost exactly um conversations that we've been having recently of iterative sequels yeah. if they should be considered better than yeah. their uh the, the games that came before because while they aren't as fresh they do polish in, in, yeah. in large ways and, and they're building upon what came before and they're able to focus more on refining rather than creating and pikmin 4 leans much more heavily on the creating side of it's yeah. got it's got dna of all the other games but it also for the first time in the series has the most certainly the most new ideas and the most new yeah. concepts and the most new identity that I'd certainly want to get to talking more on, on, on broader strokes. Um, 
But for me, it is a question that I always have to ask myself when playing two games that are similar or different. And how do I compare or contrast them? Yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier in our Discord server. Of course, you bring up Super Mario Odyssey, but for me, the the um, comparison comes more with uh, Super Mario Sunshine, another game that we were talking about. Yeah. And that that is a game that I prefer more than 3D World and Galaxy 2 and, and yeah. some of these other games and, and Super Mario 64 because it tries so many new things. And while it doesn't succeed at them, I would rather the attempts yeah. and, uh, and fresh feeling rather than the polish. But also that's certainly not how i feel about a lot of other sequels to games i mean i lo- listen off a litany of god of war ragnarok and last of us 2 and, and tears of the kingdom and all these games that are not fresh ideas but because they have that room of polish feel superior to me but pikmin 4 i think because maybe because i had played three other pikmin games that largely felt the same yeah. and i think as we mentioned in our pikmin retrospective video you really got to be in the know for pikmin to know what is different about the three games Pikmin 4 taking that step forward and as we mentioned initially taking inspiration from other areas felt for me like that step that I never knew I wanted the other Pikmin games to have and now that it has taken that step I'm like yeah that's a step forward and moving forward to me is the most important things And and while I think there are some criticisms that you have mentioned that are on broad strokes or uh, or on potential wise issues, none of them so far have been issues that I had in my experience of playing yeah. this game for 35 hours. And so if I'm not feeling any of those issues and, and they didn't hamper my experience, I can't say that they made this game worse than the other ones. And it is that potential that and the new ideas that for me, I, it, it's close because yeah. all these are all the other games are nine out of tens and this is a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, but still pretty comfortably put this as my favorite. And I think that it is in its identity and uh, new, new concepts and length and richness uh, that still, that does make this for me easily the best one. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very subjective, right? I'm, I, I yeah, just, yeah. because I also do, I, I do just think that four does have a different set of goals. And so oh, these, absolutely. these games, 100%. And we t- we talked about this in our perspective, and I think it's even more true now. Any, I think every Pikmin ranking, every permutation is four games makes sense because I think that yeah, they yeah. all have 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 a different a different flavor to them, and and, okay. and, I, and I think that is cool. Um, speaking of, speaking of flavor, we were asked by I think it was Tim who asked, yeah, uh, what so. enemy we want to eat. Mm-hmm. Do you have an a- do you have an answer prepared? Um, because I, I have an I have an answer, but I have to tell you, I'm I'm opening up the game right now so I can check my Pickopedia for its its technical name. For its actual name, so yeah. it's, it's its Latin name, its God given name. It's God given name. Um, um, I don't know. I've always I've always felt that the Aristocrabs kind of look nice and crisp. Yeah, you, you watch that MF go back in the go by in the background of uh, the Smash Four stage. And I'm like, I'd like to lick that man. You'd like to lick that man? Yeah. I mean, that's not the first time I've heard you say that. We we were also asked how about while well, while my game is loading we were also asked what color Pikmin we'd want to eat. Mm-hmm. I forget who asked that question. Do you remember? Was it maybe Andrew? Uh, it was Andrew. Yeah, I think it was Andrew. What I would like to do is, I don't know. Is it taking too long to load? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think because I I don't. Something about eating a Pikmin to me feels more nefarious than eating a creature. Hmm. Does that you don't consider Pikmin to be creatures? No, I just think I I think that well, it's obviously I have a deeper empathetic connection to the Pikmin. Yeah, see what I mean? Sure. Because when uh-huh. I think about eating a Pikmin, I think about their suffering. <laughs> when I think about eating a creature, I think about the flavor. Sure. If I ha- we 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 we're started on that at uh, that creature thing. So pulp pulp creature. What I think I might do as the if I had to eat a Pikmin color. Yeah, I would. I mean, it's a char- it's it's a cop out, but I want to grill and I'd want to use the rock Pikmin as the charcoal bricks, sure. because then they can turn the shit for me, right? Well, but mm-hmm. they can't get hot. No. Hmm. I have how about red Pikmin? I'll grill with the red Pikmin. They can actually be sure. they can be in the trenches. Well, they don't make fire. No, well, but they're, they're just can- they're just a, a resistant to it. That's true. Right. So I can keep the grill covered and I can just leave them to it. Sure. You know, you're you're using them to eat. I'm using them to eat. I don't yeah. think I want to just eat one, but I've okay. got 
Uh, here's my Piclopedia. I've, I'm talking to Dalmo because I'm looking for what's his name? What's the name of that little goofy motherfucker? Here he is, the Sun Squish. Sun Squish, the little eggy guy. Ooh, doesn't like. Oh, it. oh yeah. Oh, those are very fun. I love the Sun Squish. I would eat the Sun Squish. I would also, I would also eat uh, the miniature snu- Snoot Whacker. And this is another favorite of mine. I gotta turn the camera because he's not looking at me. There we go. He's he's a little melon. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, now I think the por- the pork willin without the spikes might be nice and juicy. Kind of looks like a yeah. big big strawberry kind of lychee looking guy. We were we were also asked, and I have to say, unfortunately, I forget who asked this. What our favorite enemy was? Is that was that a mm. question we were asked? I really like this guy here. Come on, wake up, wake up. There he is. Now, this guy is a guy I fuck with. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, specifically the mushroom variety. Sure. Yeah. The, the, star- flower, the flower variety. The creeping chrysanthemum. The, the chrysanthemum. Yeah. Well, there there is a version of it, I think, in the older games. There um, is. But it's certainly been redesigned here. And I think that let's use this uh, opportunity to transition back into talking about the video game, um, which is I love. I mean, they, they really stepped up their game here with uh, not that Pikmin enemy design has ever been lacking but i think the the additions here are some of the best uh new enemies that they've ever added i mean there's like that little uh, is it kind of like a vole bird guy that sucks things in uh, that's really yes, cool yes, um, i love the uh the the waddle the cake guy yeah that guy yeah that's a great little guy the i love that guy cloth. um there's the shell cakes, the shot, the scorch cakes, the shock cakes, and the freeze cakes. Yeah. These little rock stone cylinder guys that flop over. Those are really goofy. But I, I really think that they did an amazing, amazing job here with some of their uh, their enemy Talk design. Stool. That's another great guy. Yeah. Well, we're here. The the question that we were actually asked, and again, sorry, I forgot who asked it because Tucker and, and Tucker is a man of preparation. But I, there's a couple questions that were lost in our conversation about the office and various things. Yes. Um. Where we were also asked what our favorite item name is. Oh, I didn't prepare that. From, from the compendium. So I did. I've got a couple I'll shout out. I mean, I've got one, but it's. I don't think it's new. Um, I love the lesser mock bottom, which is a plum. Yes. <laughs> that is great. It's a classic. <laughs> so the first, I want to say on a, on a broad strokes, I love that we have Schna- Schnauz, Olimar and Louie all giving different descriptions about so good. It's so good. It's so good. And they're all very funny. I love that Louie is basically only concerned with food. However, mm-hmm. the exception is the train cars. Now, really? I really like this train car. Yeah. Now, this train car is called the middle management tank car. <laughs> now, what Louie has to say about the middle management tank car is that it's, in, it is, and this is all it says, an enjoyable place to sit and play. <laughs> but if you look at this, which they call the unlimited caboose. Is that what it, Oh, sorry, unlimited locomotive. Okay. What what Louis has to say about this one is that it is, quote, and this is all it says, very difficult and uncomfortable to ride. <laughs> now I'm still I'm still missing a couple train pieces, so I don't have any more train pieces to read out to you, but I think those are incredibly funny. Yeah. I, I also really like the shish kebab. The shish kebab is called the Four oh Grill God. Brothers. Yeah, and so if you funny. <laughs> if you read it, there's a whole sort of like fairy tale in the in the Pikmin universe about people trying to decide what to grill, and they're fighting with their food on swords, and they like cross mm-hmm. swords, and they stick the food on each other's swords, and like let's grill it all. <laughs> I, I love it. I think that the writing is very very good. I think that this is actually something that. I, I feel is, is a market improvement over previous games, which is the extent to which they lean into flavor text. Of course, Pikmin yeah. 2 especially had a lot of good stuff that was letters between Olimar and his family and Louis' grandmother and the president. Like You were getting a lot of yeah. fun character stuff from that, but I think Pikmin 4 in multiple changes allows it to be much more extensive yeah. and feel much more complete from that regard, um, which is this game has characters and like a lot of characters and not only a lot of 
side characters that I think are actually something that people aren't giving enough credit, but a big group of core characters, which I really, really enjoy. And I think that where, where the strength of previous Pikmin games was in that flavor text, in reading the Pikwipedia and reading the description of the treasures, this game does that and expands on it by just literally having more of yeah. all of it. And that that design philosophy of Pikmin but more is part of why I love Pikmin 4 is it feels a lot more complete and livable and understandable from multiple multiple uh, multiple regards but primarily because there's just a lot more enemies and a lot more treasures for yeah. you to collect and I also think that it just has the best Piclopedia of course you've got a Piclopedia and treasure uh, category thing uh, because You've got more people commenting on things. You can go in and fight the enemies or see them in their natural environment and like throw them a pick pick carrot or throw a bomb yeah. at them and see the, how they react, which is really cool. You can go see the collections and they have all the items that are in specific collections sitting next to one another placed in certain ways that sort of just shows you that you've completed everything. Um, I think that that this game really leans into the collecting aspect of Pikmin in obvious, obvious ways, but that is something I'm a huge fan of. As someone who loves collect-a-thon games, I think this is absolutely one of the best because there's just yeah. no stone left unturned. Everything you collect has um, has multiple ways. It's kind of fun, kind of goofy, and contributes to the world in a greater way. Yeah, I agree. I, I have to, I have to say I'm a little bit with, with with Josh Thomas's complaint of like, yeah, there's a lot of treasure, but like there's nine pool balls yeah, and yeah, like yeah. like twelve different can like tubes of paint of various mm-hmm. usednesses. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little bit inflated, but I don't really care because there's, as you're saying, a great collectathon sa- collectathon satisfaction in, in amassing all of them. Yeah, but for me, it really is the castaways that I think I love collecting even more than mm-hmm. the treasures. Because yeah. I have to say, I kind of fall somewhere between you and Bo on like how much I care about the, the cast of characters here. Sure, because which, by the way, most people who are listening to this don't know what you're talking about. So. Don't Bo- re- reference that as a point of reference. <laughs> Botox Media, the, in, the the notorious Botox Media, yes, yeah. is not crazy about sort of the, the characters and plot. You think that they're the best in the series. I fall somewhere in the middle in that I just think that there's, even just in the core Rescue Corps cast, there's too many for me to really latch onto them. Hmm, sure. Like in, in the case of Pikmin 2, I love the rapport that is specifically between the president and, and Olimar. Mm-hmm. Um, now I do really enjoy all of the dialogue exchanges and we, and you talk about these, I talk about these, like Dingo muttering to himself and kind of being a fuck up, but everybody thinking yeah. is really cool. And, uh, Yanni calling you new blood and kind of being a creep. I think yeah. that everybody has a really defined archetype. I just think that they, for me, there's maybe a little, there's like too many cooks, um, sure. to where there's so many different dialogue exchanges happening. It feels like every exchange is like a C or B tier fire emblem support conversation. <laughs> I can't. I want to progress to the A tier, the S tier. I want to see. I want to see sure. them banging yeah. on yeah. or the SS. Um, the, what's the SS Shepherd Bernard Beagle? SS Beagle's yeah. a little one. The little one, yeah, which is fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the castaways are fun because they are just like this little pop of a flavor text. It yeah. feels really important rescuing them from the environment because I'm like mm-hmm. these fuckers are turned into leaves or like with in enemy stomachs in caves and various things. Mm-hmm. I think there's a great satisfaction in in freeing them. Um, yeah. I, I, I really do love the castaways and I love just, I like amassing shit. You're totally Absolutely. right. It really works as a collectathon. Yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit about the castaways. Cause I think, as I was saying earlier, the, they are, I think an under, uh, an undersold element of this yeah. game because part of what made Pikmin and Pikmin two so special and then Pikmin three, I think loses us a little bit, but is that they have this weird, element of anti-capitalism and yeah. uh and environmentalism and uh people being greedy <laughs> and pikmin 4 takes the elements that were sort of in the subtext of of pikmin 1 especially 2 um that you that went by really quickly and and um weren't in the actual game like you couldn't interact with it, it was just like you know text or whatever and places them in the context of there are like 80 people that are here for different reasons. And yeah. if you talk to them and read their bios, they completely cover the gamut of the, the world is a capitalist nightmare and people have jobs they don't like and bosses they don't like and rivalries with other people. And it's only because we have 
60 side characters, quote unquote, yeah. that allow there to be every aspect of the world covered and every job and every reason why they're here and every kind of personality that the other Pikmin games, because of their minute casts, I mean, the, t- the total of Pikmin characters in the past was maybe six or seven total. Yeah. And now we've got easily 100 and most of them come from this game. I think that is a huge boon to Pikmin yeah. feeling like more of a universe. There exactly. are now 15, 20 planets that we can can name and we don't see them, but we know they exist. And the people from them have slightly different perspectives and they and they have different jobs and they're again like like why they're here. I really love walking up to someone and not knowing what I'm going to learn from them about this universe. It's not just yeah. this world, it's not just about this one person, but adding to what can possibly be tackled in Pikmin. We've got musicians, we've got uh like leisure cruises of people that have crashed and then within the leisure cruises not only is the captain worried about all the passengers that she's lost but each of the passengers has their own side story and their own job and their own reason why they went on that cruise and i just love how much they fleshed out the world by giving us a ton of people with tons of different weird stuff about them i second that completely i there's one in particular, I don't remember the name of, but they're they're an influencer or like a content creator, mm-hmm. and they came to the planet to like have cool shit to show their followers, and they just got like lost and stuck. Yeah. Um, there's so- one that there's one that like is just like a floater in space. She just vibes, yeah. and you like go up and talk to her, and it's like she she like talks in like haikus, and she's talking about how like the space police keep catching her, and she just like likes to float away in the wind. Like, what the fuck is she doing? And she's talking about all this in third person. It's like that is so weird. And you could only get it in this game where there's enough other characters that cover other things that you can have a weirdo that floats away in space and has like the police are kind of after or something like that. Yeah, I think that on a lot of sort of like the dialogue and flavor level and like in terms of the character designs, it feels kind of earthbound to me. Hmm. Like that that spirit seems like it's there. Yeah. And I, I don't I'd be curious to ever know if that was something that they were were, were channeling in any way. But the sort yeah. of like modern satire that is very subtle in Pikmin 4, but I think very present as, as yeah, you explained yeah. nicely. It does, it does ring an earthbound. Um, there is something with the musician that I want to talk about because okay. the musician gives you a quest. Yeah. And from the quest, you get an item that lets you basically use the C stick controls of Pikmin mm-hmm. 1 and Pikmin 2. Yeah. Now that is such a late game quest. I've not even done it yet. Mm-hmm. To me, this this points out, an, I think, the other big problem I have with Pikmin 4. And this okay. is one I'm super excited to talk with you about because I know you don't feel this way. Um, mm. I think that the progression in this game is pretty borked. Hmm. Um, okay. I'm happy that it's here. I was a little, I was unsure before the game came out or after playing the demo how I'd yeah. feel about the upgrades and the gear and the items and the pup training and everything. Mm-hmm. I think that on, as a system, it's really cool. And in a lot of use cases, it, I'm quite happy with it. But I feel like, A, too many of the upgrades are either quality of life or um, like like pseudo easy modes of, of oh, absolutely. Yeah. being impervious, impervious to damage from various elemental types and everything to the point where it feels like these aren't really upgrades but kind mm-hmm. of like sidesteps because i don't feel like i'm i'm in with rare exception able to explore more of the world because i have them or mm-hmm. play that much differently because they're they're present i yeah. love having the little beacons that will bring my pikmin to me or to the beagle or whatever yeah, i need yeah. them to do but that's qol um I just, I, I don't think that they found enough upgrades that felt like they meaningfully changed how I interacted with the world. A great example mm. is that you can you can build like climbing walls. Yeah. My assumption was I had to go get climbing gear to be able to use the climbing walls. Mm-hmm. But that's not really the case. You can no. just walk to the wall and, and, and yeah, kind of just scrap it. it. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that that was a missed opportunity. I also mm. think that the number of upgrades that just feel like fundamental gameplay things in the example of this um, this C-Stick functionality, mm-hmm. feels like you get them at the wrong time because if I'm getting sure. them yeah, so late that. in the game, kind of what's even the, the point of having them? 
Yeah. So I, I just, I think that- no, the- I feel the same way yeah. about the fact that you don't get the white and pur- purple onions until like halfway or all the way through the sage trials, which yeah. are going to be the last things that most people do in this game. It's like, okay, then what's the fucking point? Why, I don't need an onion at this point. Though yeah, also yeah, that is an issue in general with late game rewards for games is- and I, I feel this way about almost every game I do. It's like once you're like on your way to the platinum or whatever, you're you're not going to use any of this shit. You're you're ninety percent done with the game, and that is definitely a problem with yeah. Pikmin Four in terms of wanting to place exciting rewards at the end of right. quests that take you a long time and a lot of effort to complete. And I totally understand that. And I think that is maybe the right decision. But you're right that there's also some of them that if they'd come earlier, they would have felt like you're progressing more in a substantial way. Yeah. Uh, throughout the meat of the game but it, it's a weird balance to me where i don't feel like so just just the upgrades in general i agree that none of them are so substantial that they change the way that i'm interacting with the game on, on, on a major level yeah but i also think that is okay and maybe even a good thing because it is that steady progress that this yeah. game sells itself on it's the idea that you're not trying to jump completely jump the shark and get super a lot more powerful and get get a ton of pikmin at once it is about collecting a couple guys defeating that next thing uh pulling down the pulling down the flap uh build uh, destroying the wall making that steady progress yeah throughout the course of the game across the course of again a much much longer adventure and feeling like each element of that uh, of, of that progression, no matter how small, is reaching you towards being more powerful, understanding the mm-hmm. world more, reaching towards that 100%, finding that next cave. And I think that the upgrades play into that. On their own, they're not particularly substantial, yeah. but I think in their culmination, and because I think the game rewards you and pokes you towards going for 100%, the, in their culmination, they work towards you feeling uh, quite a bit more uh, powered up by the end of the game. You have that C stick functionality. You're not getting hurt by things as much. You're not. Uh, you you can run over fire if you need to get your Pikmin out of there or whatever it is. And especially yeah. with Ochi, you feel significantly more powerful by the end of the game. And I, I think that that is really what they're going for. Is not one specific upgrade. Feeling like, oh, I can't believe I got this, but building towards that sense of momentum. Of I was still interested in getting. Yeah. every upgrade and 100 percenting everything because the game was just fun and the balance of how many right. uh, how many raw material each thing cost and how much was unlocked from rust each day they were always poking me towards that next thing and because i think they they help my g- engagement with the gameplay loop so much i don't agree with the criticism that i would have rather had specific ones feel super substantial yeah. i don't mind that they are mild in the grand scheme of things i i think you know i agree like like i said I, there's, there's elements of system i really like but first of all i love buying items from russ i think that makes a lot more mm. sense for instance than just finding bomb rocks like in an overturned tin can yeah and yeah. then having them kind of just reappear every every, every day um mm. i like this i think that's a really smart idea um it does point to sort of another like world building thing i i'm not crazy about and you and Bo talked about this mm. but i'm going to explain for the people that aren't and they should be loyal NS listeners. Mm-hmm. This idea that nobody ever builds anything in the hub area. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it doesn't really make sense. I also, mm-hmm. even if it's like temporary, like what, what expedition crew across history or just across fiction goes to a place and like, yeah, fuck it. We're not actually going to like construct anything even temporary. Like I would no, have loved, no. even if there's like just like a little workbench that Russ was, was oh, at or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, it's neither here nor there. I just love the feeling of a hub in general. Yeah. However, so, so getting the up the, the items from via the prototypes is really cool. Powering up Ochi, I think, is actually awesome. I didn't anticipate okay. this, but I yeah. really like that because especially for the night missions, when mm. Ochi becomes like an autonomous partner of yours, yeah. it felt like, man, I really gotta upgrade my pup drive so I can make him stronger so he can heal himself and and yeah. fight bigger enemies because I can't watch two lo- luminals. Yeah. So I think that works super well. I guess my issue with the upgrades is, and you're right, you actually made the argument that I make for not having upgrades in games in the first place. That, okay. it, that it is that sense of like progression in the environment and solving these little environmental challenges and that sort of incremental progression that makes it feel really rewarding. And I think Pikmin yeah. 4 does an amazing job at that. As Absolutely. you're saying, pulling the overturned potted plant, pulling down the bridge, building a rock wall, all that stuff is awesome. Yeah. 
And I think that it kind of would have been enough. Or if it wasn't, mm. I, w- I think I just would have wanted the upgrades to feel a little bit more meaningful. Because I get the Scorch sure. Guard. Scorch Guard's okay when I'm fighting enemies, but frankly, like, I'm not going to get caught on fire by enemies. Yeah, yeah. But there is one moment where the Scorch Guard lets you get into a cave on the burner in, in mm-hmm. the fourth era in the Heroes Hideaway. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there it is. That's what I would have wanted more of. That would have g- given an environmental function to the upgrades Absolutely. too. Yeah. Even if yeah. it's subtle, just give me a, a way to have to come back to the areas with a new set of tools sure. to, to yeah. do a little bit more with them. But I think, yeah. also- I think, I think what's interesting yeah. about that is that a lot of the ones that do end up impacting the way you're interacting with the environment, if you play the game like I assume both of us did, or definitely I did, is going through and 100%ing everything. Yeah. I had the upgrades long before I needed to worry about right. getting into an area. Like, as you said, that uh, the, the Scorch Guard allows you to get into the, a certain cave in the kitchen. I had that like two levels before. So you mentioned that. And I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. But frankly, if you hadn't mentioned that, I wouldn't have thought about the fact that I can't be caught on fire. And that's why I can go in here. Yeah. Um, and also like the um, boots that let you go through sticky stuff. That's not really a problem to like the fifth and sixth area. And I had that long before that. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just walking over the sticky stuff. But I think that if you aren't going for hundred percent, those will come slower. And so then you'll realize, Oh, I need to get this. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's a weird balancing thing. So I think when you mentioned earlier that the progression's a little bit borked, I agree. But I also think that it didn't impede my enjoyment. Sure. I was, enjoying getting the upgrades and i think that they did reasonably enough stuff to like make me feel more powerful i'm like yeah this is this is fun yeah it's 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 not as detrimental in my opinion as the other progression issue and you did touch on it and that's the pikmin Mm -hmm. types Mm -hmm. i feel like this game doesn't do a good job with any of the pikmin types beyond the core three and the ice pikmin Mm -hmm. okay um I think the rock Pikmin are a really good example because rock Pikmin are the sort of sequential next onion you get. You get the onion yeah. in the fifth area, but you're mm-hmm. using them way before the fifth area. The thing about rock Pikmin, and somebody made the point on Twitter that I think is really great, of is like, well, if you're going to bring back rock Pikmin, why isn't there more crystal and glass stuff to break? Yeah, no, there's there's like some glass walls and mostly in caves. Yeah, and it just, it, it makes me wonder what the point of including these Pikmin types really was beyond a sort of Smash Brothers, to bring to do it back to Murph's point, sort of everybody's here quality. Mm-hmm. The, the white Pikmin become quite useful in the sixth area, because that's yeah, all covered are. in poison. But I, I, I'm i like, man, I just don't think that I need the rock Pikmin. Yeah. I don't think that yeah. I need the wing Pikmin. I don't think I need mm-hmm. the purple Pikmin. Because purple Pikmin, rock Pikmin are in some way an analog to purple Pikmin. Yeah. What, what what purple Pikmin have is sort of the grab like the seismic wave that mm-hmm. um that the rock Pikmin don't. You can use it like to defeat the water wraiths and things. And you have to do that in the mm-hmm. game in very specific instances. But the other thing they have is the ability to carry super heavy stuff because they're they're yeah. the way to ten Pikmin. But that's what Ochi does. Yeah. And so I just don't feel like rock winged or purple Pikmin in particular have as much of a place as the other types mm-hmm. of Pikmin in the game. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think I agree at a large scale, but I think that to me, it comes down to, it certainly would have been nice if there had been yeah. more crystal stuff, or maybe they'd somehow given wing Pikmin or uh, purple Pikmin, something else that they do in the environment to make them feel like they have a little more impact. Um, but what I think this game is so great at in terms of its progression and the way you approach things is taking things, it gives you a lot more choice yeah. than previous games. And I think having a variety of Pikmin that might have slight differences and might have varying levels of uh, importance within the environments themselves, but allowing you that flexibility to say, I prefer to have the rock Pikmin that do more impact damage, but aren't clinging on because maybe that's better for certain enemies or wing Pikmin or kind of work in a similar way to, uh, to the yellow Pikmin because they can go a little bit higher, but okay, I want to fight. Um, I'm, I'm fighting some flying enemies. So I'm going to yeah. use those. It is more of a, mild situational uh opportunity for each of these but i think having that flexibility is just a nice benefit i i yeah. was always switching it up i think that i i, I think i disagree about the wing pikmin because i actually use those quite a bit uh, especially when the areas were larger they can just go over walls and stuff when they're carrying treasure and i found that to be incredibly Fair. useful especially in caves um but the the rock pikmin i think are the ones i agree the most on 
Yeah. Um, but I always felt that rock, like even Pikmin three, rock Pikmin are like they're not the greatest. Yeah. Like we usually use them to just smash the glass walls. Um, but so it is like a mild element of I wish that they'd maybe done something more with this, and it certainly would have been better. But I also yeah. don't think it harms the game to have them be yeah. not as useful as some of the other ones because part of the game's strength, as I said, is that flexibility and player choice of this is how I want to um, like com- compromise what I'm what I'm using in the field. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree on the whole. I like that idea a lot. I think where it's most effective is sort of the interplay between water Pikmin and ice Pikmin. Sure. Because you largely can solve, unless a treasure is submerged underwater, you mm-hmm. can solve a lot of water-based puzzles with either or. And I think that mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Like, do you throw the the Pikmin across the body, the blue Pikmin across the body of water to grab the treasure and just bring it back to the water? Or do you freeze the water and go across and then use mm-hmm. Ochi or use red Pikmin or whatever yeah. to, to do that? I think that that's a really nice example of exactly what you're saying. And that does crop up a number mm-hmm. of times throughout the game. Yeah. I just don't think there's enough moments that really force you to make these kinds of decisions, I guess. Sure. Yeah, I, I, and and it's and it's not something that harms the game. I think it just points to missed opportunity for me a little bit sure. in the level design, and it also does just make me really question the three Pikmin type limit. Mm. It's not something I like. No, yeah, it's yeah. I, I think, I think part of really the the fun of late game Pikmin, especially in three when there's so many kinds to have, is having mm-hmm. some of all of them and having this big party yeah. oh, and, and having this kind of like Swiss Army knife behind you that you can switch between. The three Pikmin type limit, because I don't feel like the game kind of like bottlenecks you into those kinds of puzzle choices enough. Yeah. I just feel like, man, why couldn't I have upgraded this too the way I upgraded with Flarlick my the oh, amount of Pikmin I can have? Why can't I just have all the types by the end of the game? Because when you fight the final boss in the 20 floor yeah. um, cavern for a king, you can have every Pikmin type because yep. the 19th floor has the candy pop buds yeah. for, for everybody. So I think they realize that it's fun. And I just don't, I don't see the detriment. I Here's what I think. Okay. Because one of the problems in the earlier Pikmin games is it can sometimes be a little bit cumbersome to on the fly switch between the Pikmin and your, in your group to get the right type to throw in a tense situation. Yeah. That's not a problem in Pikmin 4. No, absolutely not. Because they so easily make you just able to toggle which Pikmin you want with left and right yeah. bumper, which I think is a great QL feature. That's phenomenal. But one that sort of, for me, it mitigates any real design justification for not letting you just have all the yeah. dudes with you. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah, that, that yeah. is one of the design, design decisions that explicitly I was like, why? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree with all of that. Um, but again, uh, talking about initially what what makes this game so special to me is that it has these design decisions that are occasionally questionable, Yeah. but because of the game's strength and many ideas... I'm able to not forget about them, but in the grand scheme of the experience, not have that impact what I'm doing. And, yeah. and maybe it's just a, yeah, it's just kind of a pros and cons game for me. It's like, right. yeah, I would have been, I would have loved to have six, or seven types of pigment behind me. Sure. That'd be awesome. But three is also enough. And yeah. I'm still having fun progressing through these areas. So I don't, I don't see it as an issue more as, as we're saying, a, a missed opportunity of yeah. that would have been fun and it probably would have been better. But in, it, it, even though it doesn't make like grammatical sense, it, it's not worse no. in my opinion. It also, because, pl- yeah, sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut no, it that's it, finished. I had like one word left, but I forgot what it was. It also plays really nicely with the idea of being able to move the onion. So it's not. Oh, that's so. That's one of my favorite things in this game. Yeah, I oh mean, it's. I think it's just kind of a necessity when you're building areas this large. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but it allows the areas to be that large, exactly. which is why I think even if yeah. it's a subtle design decision, it's one that makes it's a, a great market choice. difference. And it also allows for that freedom of of progression. Of this game is not restricting you to a certain time limit, and it's also not restricting you to the order in which you approach. The areas, yeah. not only because you usually have what you need to get basically everything. Of course, there are certain certain exceptions, but you can also make the decision like, I want to set my base up here and camp out here for a couple for a couple days and grab everything around this, yeah. move over to the next area, swap in between them. If you realize sort of late on that you needed to uh, get something that's all the way across the map, you can walk over, set up your base there so they don't have to go as quite as far. I think that that is something that just allows it to feel 
a lot more a lot more spacious. Uh, if if the areas were this big and you only had one onion place, you'd just get annoyed yeah. by the time you're really trying to complete the entire area. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really smart, and it's it's uh, you're totally right. There's so many smart choices like that. Very very good. Yeah. Let's read another community comment because we got two more. Yeah. They're both very long. Let's read this comment from from Brendan, who okay. says. Even though my tastes align more with the challenge and isolation of Pikmin 1 and 2, I adore Pikmin 4. I even think the easier difficulty is a nice change of pace after playing Pikmin 1 and 2 early this month and coming off of a steady stream of challenging games like System Shock Remake and Demon Lord Reincarnation. Uh, We've talked about it before, but I really do think 4 achieves its own uh, thing separate from 1 or 2. The first game felt like progress was hard fought, like in a dungeon crawler or cells like RPG, but I find myself approaching the world more like a Zelda or Metroid where I'm coming, where I'm noting things to come back and complete after unlocking a new type of Pikmin mm, or, yeah. inc- or increasing my population limit. Uh, I feel more like I'm exploring and unlocking the environment rather than surviving in it, yet it still maintains a distinct Pikmin gameplay. It's a rare case where a sequel retains the spirit of its predecessors and in some ways may even surpass it without invalidating the games that came before. The reasons I would go replay Pikmin 4 are very different from the reasons I'd replay Pikmin 1 or 2. That's really impressive to me. Absolutely. And I think that's what we were mentioning at the beginning in terms of this game's identity being very distinct and really kind of the first major step forward for the Pikmin franchise is the other three games, as we've talked about, have their own reasons why you'd want to approach them. They are much more similar to each other than they are to 4, but 4 feeling distinct and new and having that huge just smattering of ideas is in, is incredibly impressive and this is my favorite thing about this game and why why it is my favorite is because it feels much more substantial and appeals to me on a gameplay level in that different way i am a collectathon guy yeah. i do like taking my time on things which is part of the reason why i like pikmin 2 so much and like caves so much is i play pikmin very methodically which is maybe not the way that they want you to play it especially not in one where there's a lot more stress or in three where you have multiple captains but two yeah or two in the caves allows you to creep through the areas and take down enemies one at a time and focus on things and four also absolutely does that but i think also the great thing about four is it gives you the flexibility to do as much multitasking or as little multitasking as you want yeah and because it has that space yeah. is there's no time limit you can go to i mean i don't even know what the highest number you can go to in terms of days you, you better have it yeah. beaten by the time you're gonna you're gonna hit that that cap if it's 999 what the fuck are you what are you, fuck are you doing for all that time but um i really like that this game is spacious and relaxing and approaches multitasking and that dandori concept on an internal level of okay i feel like managing two separate groups yeah. right now and i and i want to get into ochi because i think his flexibility is why this game has the identity that it is and the options that i was praising the games for so highly earlier of approaching it in the way that you are comfortable with pick and being approached and that for me fits this, this game play a lot more um even though i adore the games that came before it this is what i want pikmin to be going forward because it feels a lot more chill vibes and like spacious identity yeah i first of all i think getting into ochi is even a crime in the world of pikmin but you know whatever you want to do behind closed doors um is only is 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 really only between you and god and the law i don't want to involve myself there um Sure. You know. at, at risk at risk of becoming an accomplice in some ways. Um, but Ochi does something I really love and I don't think is being talked about enough. Okay. Because people talk about Ochi as a second captain. But what yeah. I don't think people talk about Ochi enough as is a solution to the useless captain problem. Because mm. I'm like yeah. you. I don't do a lot of multitasking when I'm playing Pikmin yeah. 2 or Pikmin 3. I do sometimes... When 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 the going's getting tough and I got to get some shit done, but for mm-hmm. the most part, I like to keep everybody together. Now, yeah. Pikmin three addresses this problem a little bit because there's some really clever challenges where because you can very comically throw Elf, uh, Brittany, and yeah. Charlie, so you got to throw each other to bring Pikmin around. But for a lot of time, your captain is just kind of like plodding along behind you. Mm-hmm. What what 
Ochi does is Ochi works with you. It feels yeah. like even if you're not multitasking, you're not missing out on the utility or purpose oh, sure. of the character. Yeah, definitely. They are as useful by your side as they are away. Mm -hmm. And on top of just being so cute, I love Ochi. And maybe my biggest disappointment with Pikmin 4 as a larger cultural moment is that the Ochi mm -hmm. plush is so fucking ugly. Is Some, it really? Somebody on Twitter called him dehydrated. And I think that's a, <laughs> I think that's a really good word for what they did to my boy. <laughs> my boy. What did they do to my boy? They massacred my boy. His eyes are so fucking bulging out of his head. It's so weird. I I'm sorry, but that's just how Ochi is. Yeah, but there's something. It's not right. The plush isn't right. It's not right. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go on Etsy. There's this, there's this person I saw made this beautiful like little woolen felted Ochi. Now, I actually made an Ochi out of clay that's sitting over there on that shelf. Um, but I want... If I had my way... I would have an Ochi the size of I got a enormous bean bag right here. I'd have it, yeah. you know, like those big snow axes. I'd have a mm -hmm. I'd have a I'd have an Ochi oh, I absolutely. could sit on. Yeah, I'd put it right there. It would be in the background of every video. Yeah, and I'd sit on it every night, but I can't. But in the game, I can, and I think that Ochi provides such wonderful flexibility. I agree with you. I think Ochi is a across the board phenomenal design decision. I think he kind of does everything. It's everything good about this game's ideas and yeah. progression and quality of life and new concepts tied into a little ball that also is a funny character. Yeah. And I think that's also something that just classic Nintendo is great at, yeah. at taking gameplay mechanics that might not make sense otherwise and putting them in the context of a funny little guy that you can draw fan art of and yeah. makes funny noises. I mean, that's what Navi is. That's what fucking Lakitu is. And and now that's what Ochi is. He's he's a funny dog that's always by your side, but he also is platforming for the first time in Pikmin. He is uh he is a captain, much like Louis was, if you want him to be. He is yeah. upgradable for the first time in Pikmin. He can attack, which other captains can't do. He is a mount, which allows you to control your horde of Pikmin in a very unique way that cuts down on them just walking off the side of cliffs because yeah. it's great to have a horde of Pikmin behind you in other games. And of course, you can still naturally do that here. And the Pikmin are smarter here than they ever have been before. So it's less of an issue, but having them ride on Ochi and allowing that verticality of the levels because he can platform and even having occasionally little platforming quote unquote challenges where you have to yeah. jump up the brick wall to get to the top of that little grill area in, in the fifth area, which is so much fun. Um, and and being able to go across water and make makes water less of an obstacle, but allows exploration to feel a little more um, freeform in that way. I think uh, Ochi's everything good about this game, and I and I think that it's it's a really fantastic what they did there. Yeah. Is, ostensibly, everything Ochi does is something that the series had never tried to do before, other than managing multiple captains, which of course has been around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it takes us back to what Jace was saying about the game being more mainstream and accessible. I think Ochi mm -hmm. is that and more. Ochi makes it, makes combat so much easier because you do yeah. a charge that flings all of your Pikmin onto the enemy. It makes a lot of enemies trivial. Yeah, I can make an Empress Bulbax trivial if you have enough Pikmin. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so so it, it's great for, for accessibility in that way. It's great for making it that your Pikmin won't get like run into things or get lost because they're all right on one character. Yeah. There's, there's less managing of the group, which I also think is kind of a need since I don't have for the majority of the game like the sea stick whistling or yeah. like sea stick marching, which I have to do more of in the, like the GameCube games. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're totally right. It makes exploration deeper. It gives you another a touchstone in the world. This character you love and you want to take care of and that works with yeah. you and is collaborative. I think. Yeah, you're fading scrummy bones. I love the name Scrummy Bone. I'm with Josh Thomas on that. I think Scrummy Bone is a great name. Let's also talk about Josh Thomas's other complaint with the game. Because okay. th this to me is... I said my biggest issue with the enemy was the enemy's not responding. You've said that like three times. Yeah. So I've got three biggest issues with the game. Okay, sure. Here's my other biggest issue with the game. But this one actually might be the biggest issue of the game. Okay. And it's the multiplayer. Sure. I just... It's disappointing for me because I have never been able to play Pikmin multiplayer. I've yeah. never had anybody in my immediate surrounding that could could wrap their head around it. Mm -hmm. When we are in close proximity all the time, I'm going to like 
I'm going to like stand outside your door and you're going to open the door in the morning groggy, whether to go have breakfast, I'm going to say bingo battle and you're going to fall over and then you're going to come play bingo battle with me, right? But Pikmin is more than just single player. Now, obviously, yeah. single player is the grand emphasis of Pikmin 4 and it's definitely for the better. But this was a great opportunity where the controls were more accessible, where the gameplay was more streamlined, to where if there was a more fun, more complete multiplayer suite, I could have my sister and I could have Jean play multiplayer with me. And we mm. could engage with this element of the Pikmin series that I've always really wanted to but never been able to. Sure. I mean, my biggest issue with Pikmin 3 Deluxe is I didn't bring Bingo Battle online. Mm -hmm. And now not only here is multiplayer stripped back, it's also not online. This, I think Pikmin 4 is a perfect opportunity to have more people invested in, in Pikmin, wanting to play together, and it's just not here. It's Dandori battles are here, but they're so limited. There's yeah. no true co-op in the game. There's the Pebble Pitcher, which is just the like the guy, like the second player star from Galaxy. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, I just really, really, really wish they'd put more emphasis in the multiplayer. For yeah. me, it's not the it's not the thing that dis, that. That is the big detriment that is for Josh, because Josh does play so much more of that. But it's this thing of, I wanted to. And mm. it feels like some Nintendo games are better about that. Like bringing Super Mario yeah. 3D World online and, and, and having more online functionality. I would have been mm -hmm. so happy if we had online, proper, robust multiplayer in Pikmin 4, and we just don't. Yeah. Yeah, and that is something that is a missed opportunity. We've been talking about a couple of things here, and I think, frankly, most of the issues that both of us have with this game are not necessarily design decisions, although there certainly are some, but option, uh, things of missed opportunity. And yeah. uh, I, I weigh this differently in my head, and of course it's on a game-to-game -game basis or a movie-to-movie -movie basis, but the idea of critiquing a game based on what's not in the game is, yeah. or, or a movie based on what's not in the movie is sometimes something that I lean into and something sometimes something that i don't and this one i empathize with you yeah and i i agree that again it would have been a better complete package it would have pushed the series forward in a more substantial way it would have allowed for that experience because also the switch is the most accessible local multiplayer system yeah. that nintendo's ever had uh, and so it certainly would have worked very well from that regard um but it's not something that i miss because i've never played pikmin multiplayer before I don't even know if I've ever thought about playing Pikmin multiplayer before. Sure. Though I did, I did play actually Pikmin three a lot of it in co-op. Um, yeah. Though I do understand why they don't have full co-op here. That uh, doesn't because, bother me. Because there's not another captain, and if yeah. you were someone else was controlling Ochi, then they'd have a different move set, and then how would that? It, it, it certainly could have been figured out. Um, but yeah, I would have, I would have certainly liked there to have been multiplayer. Um, but it is not something that. It, that hampers my enjoyment of this game. Most, much like most of the complaints of this game. It's like, yeah, yeah oh, I can see that. Um, but yeah, I, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the reason that I... I don't feel like this is I don't feel like this is necessarily just a case of wishing the game had more than it has. I mm -hmm. think it's more a case of... In, in one way, it is. The online is, is never something the series has never had. Yeah. However, it sort of reminds me of when Mario Kart 8 came out on Wii U and the battle mode was basically fucked. Sure. Oh, no, abs that's a great comparison. Great because, comparison. Because it's not necessarily... It's vestigial. Yeah, it's, it, it's, not, it's not only that. It's not, it's not just wishing the game was more than it was. It's wishing that the game was at least meeting what it did in the past. Hmm, sure. Because Mario Kart doubled 64 but then really we we mm -hmm. had really great battle modes you could play online you could play with the cpu you could do all this stuff market it comes out you can you can like joust on mumu meadows that's kind of what mm -hmm. you can do here it's a major step back in terms of breadth and in terms yeah, of depth from from pikmin 3 and pikmin 2 um from from what i've learned sadly because i've never gotten to really play it because i don't have the people around me that are able mm -hmm. to yeah and I thought that I thought three deluxe would be my chance. It wasn't. I thought four would be my chance. It wasn't. Yeah. I just think it's an issue. Three and five. The other thing that Josh talks about the lack of co-op in. And while I agree with you, I don't think co-op would have even really made sense for this campaign. What mm -hmm. I think it really would have made sense for are the night missions. Yeah. Uh, horde mode it just invites this kind of cooperative play, whether it's zombies, whether it's any other myriad number of, of shooter horde modes. Mm -hmm. um, better with a friend. Zombies. Uh, and you can't do that here. Yeah. But I do still really like the night missions. To me, Absolutely. this is definitely a case of wishing for something that maybe it didn't was you know not going to happen. But yeah, because in the context of single player, I think <laughs> they are 
I think they're so fun. I think that the glow Pikmin are really clever. I love that the night missions are not just day exploration, but at night. I thought that's mm-hmm. what they might oh, be. Yeah. Um, but they're not. They're tower defense. They're super clever. You got to use Ochi in different ways. You have to think yeah. differently. The glow Pikmin are Pikmin gameplay, but they ask you to to kind of put a twist on it. I think the night missions are excellent. Yeah, I think that this is kind of the... The last major point that I have to talk about, though, we'll, yeah. we still have another comment, and so we'll go through a few other things, but uh, is this game takes Pikmin's con- conceptual uh, gameplay yeah. and spins it a bunch of different times to add a lot of variety within the core campaign. Yeah. And that is important because it's a lot longer, like, like multitudes longer than the other games. And the idea that they thought, we have a great core concept here with Pikmin. We've fleshed this out to shit and back in three games. Yeah. What can P- Pikmin do structurally with its core gameplay in fits and spurts and, and bite-sized chunks within the campaign that are going to keep you always doing something slightly similar, but slightly different and yeah. always feeling fresh because of that. And for me, that is that is one of this game's greatest strengths. And the night missions are the biggest part of that. Well, I guess I'd say the caves are probably more prevalent than the night missions. Um, but the night missions are the most synced element of that, obviously. Uh, and the idea that we have a whole type of Pikmin that's relegated to that, and they act kind of differently, and then enemies are acting kind of differently, and you have to approach the um, maps in a different way. It's the exact same map, but you aren't interacting with it in the same way, which is a really great reutilization of of that content. Of course, you can think of back to Pikmin 1 and 2, where Pikmin 2's maps were just slightly retooled versions of the ones in, in Pikmin 1, that is a good re- good way of reutilizing content, but I think this game does it, re- it does it really well in terms of there is that in game reason of okay these areas have been been given the okay for you to do night yeah. missions in, and so then each of the areas where your ship could land and be or be moved in the daytime are where the different missions take place. So that corresponds in in a nice way um, and offers you a different way that you're approaching these level designs. Um, I think that is is really, really quite special. And it also uh, just expands in a place where Pikmin technically had a hole before. His nighttime didn't exist. It was it was a scene, yeah. it was a cut scene. It was it was a loading screen ostensibly. Uh, but now nighttime is like you you could imagine that P- Olimar could have fought for his life on the surface of Pina 404 in that first game, but he got in his ship and got out of there. What happens if you stayed on there? What if there was a a uh, a different reward, which I like of the glow yeah. sap being what you would use to recover the leaf wings, um, which, by the way, in and of themselves are a great way to bring the quote-unquote humans of this world and the uh, leafy Pikmin biology together in, in an interesting way. And having it be kind of this virus. I, I think that this game does a lot in in, yeah. in ways of a variety. And not only is that the night missions, but it is the fact that you have these caves back from Pikmin 2, I think done better than in Pikmin 2 because they are more specifically designed. I certainly want to get into that and why why I like the cave so much, but also, it's not just the cave. Sometimes it's a Dendori challenge, and sometimes it's a door battle, so you never know what you're going to get when you're jumping into one of those caves. And I liked every mode of play here. And there's like five of them. And then there's even technically like a a secret sixth with the uh, Olimar shipwreck tale at the end. Um, So I think the variety is one of the key strengths here in Pikmin 4. So that the series is just, other than Pikmin 2, never really tried to have. Because they're very focused, simple, streamlined experiences. But there's just a lot to do in this game. And it's always yeah. changing itself up. I mean, that's that's true and it's not true. Because ultimately, the Dandori challenges really are just the mission modes from Pikmin 2 and mm-hmm. Pikmin 3. Yeah. Um, they just happen but to now Integrated be- into the main campaign. Yeah. And so they break up the gameplay as opposed to, okay, I'm tired of this. I'm going to go do sure. challenge mode. It's, oh, I stumbled across this. I'm going to get an in-game reward from playing this that's going yeah. to contribute to my progression. And so tying them together, I think, is that variety is what I was getting at. Yeah, no, that, that's really fair. I just the, the reason I think that's important is because, like, to me, the night missions are true variety because they really do ask me to play Pikmin very much yeah, differently. Yeah. Even the Dendori challenges, which I do really love doing, and, and They're fantastic, there's, yeah. there's a number that I'm excited to go back to because I didn't get good enough scores on. Mm-hmm. But, like, they are just asking me to play Pikmin fast. Night missions yeah. are asking me to play Pikmin differently. Of course, um, absolutely. And I think that that's why they're super cool. The shipwreck challenge too is, I don't think we need to get super deep into it, but it's like perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's 
easily one of my favorite elements of the entire game because it does a, a the structure of Pikmin One is my favorite structure of the entire series. So yeah. now I have it again, but I have it in an even more distilled way with a timer. So mm-hmm. it, it feels like it's so it clearly is inviting me to replay for faster and faster times, mm. which is something that I like doing in games in general. Um, so I feel this is a it's a perfect length for me to jump back into it and yeah. revisit it. And and as you're saying, the ways that mission mode that existed before now is like a narrative function. This mm-hmm. does too, obviously, because you learn what happened to Almar before the events of the game leading up yeah. into them. So I, I think you're totally right about the game have its cohesive variety, which I think yeah. is really interesting. Mm, definitely. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. We got yeah. one more comment. What more do you want to talk about? Frankly, I'm running out of steam. Not no, I, no, I, I, I think we're, we're, we've really covered this game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll just share my two cents about caves. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think they're way better than Pikmin 2's caves. Because I'm just I'm I'm not a fan of the procedural nature of the Pikmin Two caves. To mm-hmm. me, they're a big reason why I don't really have as much motivation to replay Pikmin Two the way I've got motivation sure. for One and Three. Yeah. To me, the caves in Pikmin Four are so much. Obviously, they're handcrafted. Yeah. But the ones that and, was, and the best caves in Pikmin Two were the ones that felt that way. Yeah. And, and what's what's great about these ones is that there's some that have unique theming and really deep dungeons and complex things. Like the aquarium one in Serene Shores mm-hmm. is so good, even though the final boss, like the giant Wallywog, is like kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Just that that theming and and the and the literal depth of the number of sub levels and everything. I think there's just so much more care in the caves here. So yeah. I'm with you. I think that they're I think that they're vastly improved, and they go they went from something where in Pikmin Two I was always like. I don't really want to go back underground. In mm. Pikmin Four, I still, because I'm I'm just I'm just overworld pilled to that extent. Yeah, I'm yeah. still like, oh man, I don't know. I wish I was above ground more. I wish I wasn't doing as much level based stuff. But mm. it's so much better here that I think that it's it's really a non factor. I think my only critique of caves really is that I wish there were a couple more uniquely themed caves because you sure, do absolutely. reach the point of doing the metallic rusty themed caves oh definitely, definitely again and again and again and yeah. the best ones are like the bam like that bamboo like dark bamboo forest or like mm-hmm. the ice the the freezing caves where you gotta thaw the ice and and, and yeah the aquarium cave but i think on the whole the caves are really really good yeah and i think that they're also a as i said a great part of the game because they break up that gameplay but also where pikmin 2 i admittedly fails even though i prefer that game to pikmin 1 is that i feel like you spend most of your time down there um, in Pikmin 4, yeah. it's much better balanced in terms of the number of caves, how long they take, but also just the fact that there's a lot more to do above ground than yeah. there was in Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2 had some had some treasures above ground, but had had some treasures yes. above ground. And mostly it was puzzles to get you to that next cave. And that is partially the case here. Most yeah. of the puzzles are going to lead you to an area or defeating an Abra. Uh, and and Abram, I said Abram, an enemy. I can't be defeated. So it, it, it just it, those two terms are linked in my head. You would need uh, ten thousand Pikmin to defeat me. <laughs> you're pretty large, all things considered. <laughs> um, defeating an enemy or or solving a puzzle are largely going to lead you to a cave, but they're also they're just much larger and more complicated, and you spend so much more time in the open yeah. world that it it feels like a trick to me. To go yeah. down into a cave, as opposed to the goal is to get into the caves, which it wasn't big one. Yeah, somebody in a Discord, it might have been, I want to say, like Murph had said this, that like in Pikmin 2, the overworld was the conduit for the caves. Yeah. It's not the case here. It's, no. it's, yeah. I, I agree with you completely. I think the one thing that Pikmin 2 caves do kind of have mm-hmm. is that at the end of the Pikmin 2 caves, you got an upgrade, and the upgrade was mm-hmm. meaningful. Sure. I, 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 I wonder if meaningful upgrades at the end of the caves in addition to like Russ's stuff would have yeah. maybe felt a little bit better and would have let you kind of control have let the devs kind of like control your progression a little bit more and like mm, sure. you've got to go down this cave or you got to go down a cave in each area and no matter which cave you do it's like the thing is down there or something or just make it that there's a mandatory cave in every area and it's like yeah. the big dungeon cave because it sure. feels like every okay. area does have its dungeon cave Maybe mm-hmm. like you just make that one mandatory, and at the end of it, yeah. it's like the upgrade. I'm just spitballing. I just think that there's maybe a way to break because I think that's the one element of Pikmin Two Caves that I feel like is a little bit better. But sure, you want to read you the last comment? comment? 
Yeah, uh, it's the one from Ben Pye, right? Yes. Yes. All right, this sir. is a long one, but it, it's a uh, an introspective one. It's a reflective one. Also, Ben Pye is a new community member, so exactly. I, I feel like I feel like I can tell. I can tell Abby, you gotta cut it down, right? Ben Pye is new. Ben Pye gets to yeah. skip this one past the goal. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I've been a fan of the Pikmin series since the first game released on the GameCube. Hell, the new play controlled version of Pikmin is my favorite game of all time. While the sequels are great in their own right, I even don't dislike Hey Pikmin. I'm in that camp as well. They didn't live up to what I loved about Pikmin 1. The first game had such amazing atmosphere and it encouraged multiple playthroughs to get better micromanagement and faster completion times. So while Pikmin 4 strays away from what I truly loved about the original, the new direction 4 is going feels like a seamless next step. The gear and upgrade system felt right at home with Pikmin's scrounging materials game loop. The world felt full as opposed to the tiny worlds of 3 or the cave focus levels of 2. 4 had a great balance of good cave levels and good overworlds. We just mentioned that. While I'm never really a fan of the I clapped when I saw it, saw it nostalgia pandering fan service a lot of series get, I did enjoy how the enemy roster of this game felt like a greatest hits. I do wish we had more newer enemies, bosses especially, but it was nice to revisit some Enemies with the new combat, especially those we haven't seen in a long time. Night Expeditions is a fun twist on the formula. I really hope Pikmin 5 brings us back and fleshes out more. This game isn't absent of flaws. The game definitely feels way too easy and forgiving at times. Enemies not responding makes the worlds feel empty, especially when they're larger. Ochi and Ice Pikmin invalidate a lot of enemy encounters. However, a lot of these flaws can easily be fixed. I think if they had difficulty options like in Pikmin 3... It gives you more options on fo- on experiencing the game differently without forcing it being too easy or too difficult. In the end, I absolutely adored Pikmin 4, much more than I anticipated. It genuinely gives me pause for if I like this game more than the first, my favorite game ever. I'll give it t- I'll give it time, but what an absolute package. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that I think that's great. And and uh, I I do think it's really a, a strong point here in that nothing here is as overt as um as to Donkey Kong section from New Donk City and Mario Odyssey. Mm. But I do think there's a lot of really reverent and thoughtful things in Pikmin 4 that celebrate sure. what the series was. Now yeah. I always get them confused. There is the and I'm gonna open up I'm gonna open up my Piclopedia again to make sure I'm I'm precise okay. my language here. It's gotta load up again? No, I have to sit I, here and banter for a bit. No, I have it here. I I am I'm, I'm walking over to my man my man Dalmo view Piclopedia. Dalmo. Because there is the Emperor Bulbax, and then there's another type of Bulbax, the Sovereign Bulbax. Yeah, I was going to call them the Superior Bulbax. Now you do fight a Sovereign Bulbax um, in the in the in the campaign in um, the shores, Serene Shores. Yeah, yeah at the top in, of the thing. In the um, when you do it in Almar Shipwreck Tale, yeah, he drops the piggy bank. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, that's a homage to Pikmin One, in yeah. that you defeat Sovereign Bulbax and you get Emperor. what? The Emperor Bulbax in the in the first one. Oh, it's not the Sovereign in the in in the in the first game. Yeah, isn't it Emperor Bulbax? That's the that's the final boss. Yeah, maybe I'm misspeaking. I just because part of my my thing is like the, my guys are so, so you can't see they're the, they're, now, the, they're the same design but just a little bit bigger, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm misspeaking. I apologize. But the name of the final boss in the first one is Emperor Bulbax, and he drops the piggy bank, which is the last ship piece, and all, it's unnecessary for the ship. But Olimar needs yes. it. This is what I'm. Ex- this is what I'm trying to say. Yes. I got lost in the terminology. I apologize. I just thought you were maybe a piggy band, but oh, oh, shucks. Um, just moments like that, I think, are really great. Just yeah. little callbacks, little callbacks. I, I really appreciate that because I do think, and it's something that I think Brandon said a lesson that Ben Pye is saying here, the game does love the ro- it, its roots. Yeah. It loves its roots. It's got it's, some Hey Pikmin roots. It's Sparkly hey, from Hey Pikmin. Yeah. And also the art direction is very Hey Pikmin. This is mm-hmm. something that Josh Thomas raised. And it's totally true because I was watching some Pikmin 3 gameplay today. I was like, this game is dark. Visually dark. The color, mm-hmm. the the colorful color palette of this game, is definitely owed to Hey Pikmin, which sure. I th- which honestly I think is great. I think that the, yeah. I think the anime is 
pop way more out in this color yeah. without feeling like plasticky. I don't think they look artificial. I just think they're more colorful. So yeah, yeah, little callbacks like that I really appreciate. And I do just think that it is fantastic that we're in a position where it feels like everybody is is happy with this game. Yeah. I just don't think that that always happens. Hmm. I mean, it, it didn't happen with Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not going to say, Tucker, I'm not going to say. People are turning. I'm not going to say people are turning to Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not going to say that. But what I am going <laughs> to say is that there is a contingent online that are not super crazy for Tears of the Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Part of it. Some people fell away by Breath of the Wild. I'm not part of that contingent. The point is sometimes the series take these steps and it does. It feels like it leaves somebody behind. Yeah. I don't think Pikmin 4 leaves anybody behind. Mm, interesting yeah. and that's and that's what i'm so excited about it doesn't it doesn't feel like by bringing more people into the fold we're compromising that much mm. but it also feels like we're evolving we're absolutely do, the game has so many different objectives and i think it checks the boxes so well yeah and there's like really small things i'm not crazy about dan parr was talking about this on twitter i know we disagree i love the pikmin font i'm a sucker for the og pikmin font give me the pikmin font and pikmin 4 mm-hmm Little things, squabbles. No, we did lose. Yeah. We lost the Pikmin 3 Deluxe logo on the home screen of the Switch. Yeah. Because Pikmin 4 cannibalized that. Yeah. But like, even though I have so many problems with the game and I feel like I've exhausted them. Yeah. As I was saying before, it's a game of, it's a ratio game. Mm -hmm. And the positives of Pikmin 4. Just like X. Which by the way is what the website is called. Oh, okay. Ratioing. I was thinking of Dylan Cuthbert's Game Boy title X. Oh. I would think about Ty West's film from last year. X. I was thinking about <laughs> um, the, the rating that you give to films that have graphic nudity. Yeah. Like Caligula. Yeah. Um, We're done. We're done. I was thinking about how much I love... Pikmin 4, and how great it is, Tucker, because you know me. You know you know me better than most people know me, right? Yeah. How often am I disappointed by new games? Often. Yeah. This was a slam dunk for mm-hmm. me. There is no way that, 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 that this year's got another game in the tank for me, like Pikmin 4. Yeah. I'm just so pleased. This is a perennial game. This is the sort of game that will live on well beyond the Switch's life cycle as a new high watermark for the series. So yeah. I have nothing more to say. I mean, we've talked for two hours and eight minutes. I want to apologize to the Emperor Bo- Emperor Bulbax for having a... a You're not even saying the name right. Bulbax. I'm sorry. I can't... Re- you know that I can't read. I see the... LS- Very hard for your job. I, I know. You write and read. Constantly. Yeah, it's, a tr- it's tricky. It's hard for you as an editor. The Emperor Bulbax. But my other problem is I do like Bulbax more. I think it Why? R- rolls off the tongue better. Bulbax. 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 I want to apologize to the Emperor because I love Pikmin 1. Yeah. I just killed him again right before Pikmin 4 came out. I want to apologize for besmirching his name and confusing him with the Sovereign Bulbax. Yes. Which is just the Emperor but bigger. I want to apologize to all the indie games I didn't play because I was playing Pikmin 4. I want to apologize to all the games I'm still not going to play because I'm still not done playing Pikmin 4. I want to apologize to you for rambling on. That's all I, right. I want to apologize to Jean, who's been le- reading out in the living room waiting for us to finish this video. It's taken two hours. I want to apologize to... I want to apologize to... to... Nintendo for doubting him on this one. I sure. didn't think it was coming. I thought the dream yeah. was dead. They you want to make any apologies? No, I, I'm not sad I like this game. I'm not. Either. I had a great goddamn time with it, and I, th- I think that the I, as I, I want as I wrap up, yeah. I post your apology tirade. The reason why I consider this my favorite is because it adds ambition to the pikmin series and pikmin is something that i've always loved because it's polished because it's tight because it's got this identity but it was lacking that next step for the for the longest time hey hey pikmin and pikmin bloom notwithstanding we have three largely similar games and pikmin's 
base formula and identity and concept were always so strong to me that I wanted them to add it to other things and try new things with it. And that is what Pikmin 4 is. It is ambitious almost to a fault. I would personally not say for me to a fault, though I think there are arguments for there to be faults because of its ambition. But I think it will pay off massive fucking dividends for this franchise. It is now selling better than any previous game. There will be more, I think probably more fans of this game than there are of previous games. And that will inform the series going forward and showing that Pikmin can be something more and they can try and reinvent the wheel and add new ideas. And, and maybe, maybe it's not working all the time. Maybe they make, maybe they make a Pikmin game. That's only multiplayer. And that's why there wasn't multiplayer in this, but you can see where the development time went. It was in making this three times longer than any other game and having it be basically two Pikmin games in one and then a mini Pikmin game inside it and in larger worlds and more characters and more concepts and more gameplay and better controls and down and down the list. I think this game knocks it out of the park consistently, 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 and it shows that Pikmin can be more and hold my attention for 35 hours in like a week and a half. I mean, I just, I was addicted to this game. I, 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 I need to do everything. I got the gold fucking flowers next to every goddamn thing. And it's because this game is just so polished and so engaging and so charming and so clever. It, it's one of my favorite games of this year. It's one of my favorite Switch games. It's one of my favorite Nintendo games. It's one of my favorite games. They, they really, really, really killed it, especially for me with this game. More than you. Yeah. <laughs> Take me a second. <laughs> Because I was thinking, I, just, I was just having, Tucker, I was just having an idea. He said multiplayer only Pikmin game, here's what I want. Don't make okay. this Nintendo, don't do it. But here's what I want, but don't make it. Pikmin Battle Royale, Pikmin Fortnite. I want a Pikmin Battle Royale, but you play as one of the 100 Pikmin in Olimar's squad. And the name of the oh. game is to not get grabbed Kill by Olimar. Olimar. No, you have to not get oh. grabbed by Olimar because Olimar throws you into jeopardous situations. You you gotta you gotta be like hiding behind shit and like dodging Olimar's hand because he picks you up and like will throw you like into the mouth of a bulb orb, mm-hmm. and the Pikmin can like ha- can like penny like beat each other in the back of the heads so they fall over and they're like disoriented and Olimar can grab them easier. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um. Last thing I just want to say is I want to have a conversation with you, Tucker, and not did. right now because it's so goddamn. Okay. If we've been going for so fucking long, I want to talk about the future of the Pikmin series. Okay. Because I just, I just, it's just a thought that I want to get out of my head. But you were saying, you and Bo were saying 5 million copies for Pikmin 4. I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting to see. It, it just, because the early sales hype reminds me a lot of Metroid Dread. Sure. Metroid Dread has now been confirmed as of an interview with the head of Mercury Steam as of a couple days ago at being just over 3 million copies. Mm-hmm. And that's best for the series, but that's not massive. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just so hopeful that Pikmin 4 is an explosive improvement in sales over its sure. predecessors. Yeah, yeah. Because Nintendo is putting their putting their Picosy into this. The Nintendo C. They got you can buy Pikmin clocks, you can buy ice Pikmin ice cube trays. There's ads all over the place. They're re-releasing games. They're going hard. Fans are buying out Times Square. I just, I want it to connect because I want Pikmin 5 in 2026. That's what I want. Everybody, thanks for staying tuned. Everybody, one, two, switch. Everybody, if you made it to the end, good job. Um, I'm not putting timestamps, so... If you made it here, do you sorry. ever? Have you have you ever? No, but I've often thought about how nice it would be if I did. All right, everybody, go buy Pikmin Four if you haven't yet. If you have bought Pikmin Four, play more of it. How about? <laughs>